Everybody, so one on one is taking care of his kids. Feel free to Instagram him and guilt trip him into showing up late if you feel like it. I'm here with Dr. Longo, aka Old World Florida, aka one of the greatest musicians that I just you know found out he used to make music, so probably pretty good stuff. And then, uh, what else? Oh, yeah, researcher into Atlantis and Tartaria, trying to find out the truth about the world. And one of the things we're going to try to take a, a little moment to focus on is East Coast Florida. That kind of thing, because I think it gets left out a lot. I think Dr. Longo is uh, not leaving it out. He's got a lot to say. But hey, how are you doing? He just muted himself because I'm still ranting. Poor guy. I'm doing well, Andreas. How are you? Nice I'm to meet you. Here. Yeah, dude. Glad you're here, man. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. So what got you into doing your research originally? I know you started out with music, and then you started deciding that you had to break into consciousness other ways. What happened? Well, um, I was valeting cars to um, paying the bills, if so to speak. But uh, in Florida, yeah, Palm, Palm are they Beach, are Island. they fancy cars or are they like nice cars? Yeah, you'd you'd be amazed. Yeah, wow. So but, you're like um, hyper, you're like over the hyper materialism because you got to experience it for free. That's cool. Yeah, maybe I didn't know a thing about cars. Never liked cars, so I didn't have okay, any okay. appreciation for it. But um. You know, it, it was good, good exercise, uh, rubbing <laughs> elbows with some interesting people, to say the least. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, I guess you're not that far from like Trump and all those kinds of people, you know. So oh, I was pretty much parking all his friends' cars, you know. I knew I could do it. I was going to just like make people harass you until you showed up, you know, and not like in a Illuminati, like crash into your house kind of way. Just sort of a like we missed you. Good to see you. <laughs> you talking to me, bro? Yeah, I was like, he might not show up. You just bother him and guilt. Him. Like, okay. okay. Well, you did it. You did it. Yeah. I love you guys. I'm glad you made it. Well, so we were just talking a bit about the background here for Dr. Longo and like how he was valeting cars and rubbing up against crazy people. I mean, rich people, imp influential Freemasonic kind of people. Lizard people. Yeah, lizards. Go on. So then what happened? Mm -hmm. Um, that didn't directly lead to my uh, interest in this. I was always, you know, conspiracy minded uh, coming out of high school and had a couple experiences I've talked about a bunch of times on, on my channel and, and Juan's. But uh, basically, I just felt, you know, Tartaria kind of hit in like 2017, I guess, the whole movement, old world chronology, revisionist movement, whatever you want to classify it as but um, right yeah critically reanalyzing that, history for the first time since fake news was printed yeah that's a nice thing to do mm -hmm. and when that you know sort of uh floodgate came down and all the information was hitting youtube and stuff i couldn't help but notice there was such a void for florida 
Mm. Considering how it's pretty much the starting place of the United States um, as we know it. And every it, mystical search ever, Ponce de Leon. I mean, we vaguely know, right? Mm -hmm. Pirates of the Caribbean is ha half the Pirates of the Caribbean is taking place off the coast of Florida. You know, people wow. don't, don't remember that. But um, so I just thought I realized there was such a void. You know, no one was filling this this space where. And I'll be honest, it was uh, kind of like Tartarian truthers and uh, autodidactic Campbell that right. really inspired me because they made uh, such a niche off of um, Australia. And so many people were tuning in from from different places. I was like, well, you know, Florida's got to have as much, if not more, uh, interesting history. And it, and it does. Of course, and people have always romanticized Florida with, you know, uh, references to Atlantis right. and uh, stuff like that. You know, the Bahamas has the Atlantis uh, resort, you know, pretty much off the coast of Florida. The Bahamas are Florida, you know, just right. Yeah. I mean, Cuba, Haiti, all these places. And if you look back a little further, you can see where they were all land tied. You know, it's not that long mm -hmm. ago. And what do we have now in Florida? A bunch of lagoons and everyone's like, oh, these are, what are they going to call them? Little islands? No, they're part of Florida. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I just started getting into that stuff. And I think uh, having a big interest in astrology kind of set me up for success, to be honest, because it just gives you such a, a leg up with phonetics, um, mythology, decoding mythology, decoding, you know, the singularity of like, you know, how is, dots. This, how is this God, that God, but also that God at the same time, you know, that that'll tie some people's shoes together. But if you know your astrology, you can always pretty much make it out with a clear, you know, clear, precise understanding. See, that and, makes a lot of sense uh, because you got people interested in astrology and astronomy. So, like, choosing to, like, find Florida even, like, using the stars, that's kind of what happened, right? So, well, There's star you know, maps, too, here in Florida, right, Narco? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> if, if you want to, I guess we can just kick it off talking about Atlantis. You know, Atlantis, what is Atlantis? Uh, there's a million different, different interpretations. There's... Of course, with everything that we're going to be talking about, people's first impulse is to say, well, oh, it's all just allegorical. It's all just, you know, you're missing the point. If you're looking for a physical object in any of these legends, you're misled. And there's truth to that. You know, I'm always going to, you know, uh, uh, put the allegorical interpretation where it belongs. But... The allegorical interpretation does not negate the literal interpretation. Right. Just yeah. just because Shakespeare wrote plays about King Henry does not mean that all the King Henrys never existed. Right. Well, maybe they maybe they didn't, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, just because Egypt was referenced in the Bible does not mean Egypt does not exist. Right. So just because these places are named in mythology, such as Atlantis, the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Hesperides, does not mean that there is no physical location for these places. There certainly is, you know, Eden. What is Eden? It's it's odd and even. It's Adam and Eve. Uh, odd numbers are masculine numbers. Even number numbers are uh, feminine. Prime mm. numbers, right? Prime numbers. Adam and Eve even. combined is Eden or odd and even combine those that's Eden. Well, it could also be the time when the earth was even the sun and the moon were even in their path in the sky. And that resulted in a much, much more, uh, you know, constant climate and temperate weather, not so many storms or mishaps, right? So there's many interpretations to this, but if there is a tropical physical paradise with lush vegetation, spring water, a fountain of youth, all the qualifications. Florida is at the very tippy top of that list. And that's pretty much what we're going to be talking about, or at least I'm going to be talking about. It's it, Well, it's interesting, 
Because you're, I mean, you know, and, and credit where credit's due, because like you said, like nobody was covering this recently. But if you go back, you're not the first one to talk about this. You're just bringing right. back to the point that every, like Ponce de Leon, these people were going to Florida, everyone who had the most educated guess they could make on where they were going to find something. And then mm-hmm. isn't it interesting, you have more information than they do now, because you can look at the flora and fauna and the history of alligators and understand like um the the different kinds of of vegetation that exist in the lagoons that have been there for a million years or whatever i mean the the scientologists chose clear water uh Mm -hmm. i i can think of a billion cults though in florida like everybody wanted to go to florida the hollow earth people right the uh, chorus is there too i mean florida comes up a lot or it did what happened so you can kind of start right there with why do so many people, why are they drawn to Florida? Now you could start Clearly the alligators and the 120 degree humidity. I mean, everyone loves that, right? Well, you know, that might be a good place to start right there. Okay. The garden of Eden. What is the garden of Eden? It's earth's most hospitable zone. Mm. region. Okay. Vapor canopy. Okay. Well, yes and no. Florida had giant trees. So we'll, we'll get back to that. But um, what, what was I just saying? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I jump around. So Florida, okay. uh, uh, life, ancient life in Florida. The, okay. The- 120 degree weather. 120 degree weather, right? Now you'd probably think. Most hospitable, right. You'd probably think that uh, of the United States, Florida would be very high on the hottest, on the list of hottest states, right? That would be the average person's guess. Well, what if I told you that Florida is not hot? Okay. Believe it or not, Miami, you'd probably put Miami at pretty high on the list for Florida, uh, America's hottest cities. Well, what if I told you that in Miami, it has only ever gone over 100 degrees one time ever Mm. on record? That was in 1941 or 1942. And it went over 99 degrees. Freaking ray guns from the government. That's the only excuse. But so what about North Florida? I mean, isn't it in the swamps or something? Is it off the it doesn't coast? count. North Florida's like Alabama, dude. We're talking we're, we're about. Speaking, we're speaking about peninsular <laughs> Florida. Where people peninsular live, Florida. Yeah, people live there and they're not in the swamp. Okay. But uh, the panhandle is still very temperate. Uh, and by temperate, I don't mean temperate zone. I mean temperate. Like it doesn't get very hot. It doesn't get very cold. The entire hmm. Gulf of Mexico. The whole entire Gulf Coast is the most temperate region in the world. Okay, what about okay. humidity though? The humidity, I was joking about. Well, half, if you're not like, if you're not used to humidity, to breathe there. But I mean, isn't that maybe good for certain kinds of life? Humidity is a necessity for life to flourish. Okay, you have the highest uh, variation of species where you have the most warmth and humidity, but The beauty of Florida is that it's predominantly subtropical. So you have the best of both worlds. In the full-blown tropics, you would probably never be able to live outside butt naked. Okay, Mm -hmm. you'd be eaten alive by mosquitoes. Just go watch Discovery Channel and you'll see that, okay? Um, Florida, however, its temperature... The average, because of the Gulf of Mexico, because of the Gulf Stream, which is the amniotic fluid of the very, of the very planet that we live on, okay, oozes from the Gulf Stream. This is why this area is so special. It's not just Florida. It's the Gulf of Mexico, okay? Mm-hmm. This water is the very stream that would sustain the planet during these periodic cataclysms, especially when the northern hemisphere freezes periodically, which we know it does. Okay, the Gulf Stream is the only thing keeping parts of the northern hemisphere alive. Right. If you know anything about the Bach saga, the Bach saga places a immense importance on this Gulf Stream. Right. Yeah. Right. We were looking at it yesterday, actually. And it's interesting. The Mormons have their stories about the Gulf Stream and just in general, how boats could get from one side of the world to the other side. It's pretty easy when you look at a bottle of plastic litter in the ocean and see how far it can get using the Gulf Stream. It can go Mm -hmm. from Africa to Florida back to England. It's pretty impressive what the current can force to happen. Yeah. 
And that water travels intelligently. You know, it was tracked intelligently. That mm. you know, this stuff doesn't happen by accident. The, so do you think that's why like Florida's got life? I mean, like alligators, things that might have survived other resets other places, but they yes. were close enough to okay. Yes. Now what does Plato what 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 do the uh priests say to Solon in Plato's description of Atlantis? They say, due to our flat um flat uh, lack of elevation in a, a land of rivers due to uh, the nature of their land. Limestone, essentially. Giza mm -hmm. and Florida are very, very similar. Giza, Florida, and the Baltic, believe it or not. Uh, right. the, war the warm parts of the Baltic. Where there be sea. pyramids, yeah. The Gulf of Finland. <laughs> yeah. uh, Gulf to Gulf. This is the Gulf Stream. Oh, and they connect, basically. Yeah. So I'm, I'm in Lake Worth here that has the highest amount of Finnish people outside of Finland. The most Finnish city in America, Lake Worth. Because they would have followed the natural current. And do you know why that is? Why Lake Worth specifically? That is the city where the Gulf Stream comes closest to land. Of course. So it's okay. not even it's not even a plan. It's now just Finnish Finnish people bury their dead in bogs. The ancient Finnish people buried their people in bogs. Not the box saga. The box saga they buried their dead. But traditionally like uh these uh Germanic tribes, Celtic, Nordic tribes would bury their people in bogs. Wow. Well, in Florida, the oldest burials in the archaeological record are strawberry blonde Vikings with your European DNA right. that are buried in bogs that are identical to the burials in Finland. And the Cherokee have legends of this, right? They talk about the tall, wild redheads and blondes that, that you know, yeah. they chased out of zones and areas. Right, right. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So that, that brings us back to the Phoenicians, because those people, those Vikings, those tall, red hair, maybe blonde haired, but definitely redheaded giants, giants compared to who? Compared to the four foot 11 conquistadors? Yeah, Dane maybe. DeVito versus Muhammad. I see the, the gradient right. there. Or was it compared to the eight foot Tamukua, the Tamukua natives of Florida that the Spanish and French ran into? <clears throat> they were seven foot nine, okay, almost eight feet tall, and lived to 350 years. I can show you that if you would like to look at it. Yeah, pull that up. I also have a couple questions while you're pulling that up. Like, so for instance, uh, what do you think about the fur covered people? Were these fur covered face giants? You know, I mean, we have like beards versus bald faced humans. Do you think that there's something to okay. that? So I don't know much about fur covered people in Florida other than like skunk ape, um, which is more like a Bigfoot type creature um, that I don't necessarily believe in. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, because you are it, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. This is you. No, I mean, this, this is the wild. Can I read? Can I read something real quick uh, to uh, going back to the whole you can survive in the swamp. It's not that hot. There's a, an ex excerpt from 1887, an excursion through the Everglades. And he says the word swamp, as we understand it, has no application whatever to the Everglades. That it is a country of pure water, that this water is moving in one direction or another, depending on the natural topography of the country. And that the air is wholesome and pure, free from disease, germs that near the coast and mangroves and mosquitoes thrive. But deep in the Everglades, in the wintertime at least, you can sleep comfortably without a net. That was 1887. Yep. Hugh Willoughby. Will yeah, go ahead. Because that's no, most... Go yeah. oh, ahead. Most go ahead. NPCs will, will say, oh, Florida is just a mosquito, mosquito <laughs> paradise. You could never live there, you know prior to mosquito control i imagine uh, that uh earth is a mosquito like preservation i don't think they lied about that on lilo and stitch but if you just you look at these pictures from the renaissance right and this is like mother Ma mary magdalene for instance you look up the harry mary it's actually really easy to type in harry mary and you know i don't even think you need safe search on but just in case but like it's always this furry <laughs> harry mary renaissance let me uh, um, boom, bam, look at this stuff. Always covered in fur, Bigfoot. Mother, Mother Mary is Bigfoot, according to the Renaissance, covered mm -hmm. in fur. And then so are dudes. And then here's the other part. So they dye their skin green, get the wild green man. And they've got littler guys. Like, look at the height of this guy and look how small this guy is, right? So it's interesting because you've got, like, the giants. I don't know. I mean, it's not that weird considering you were just talking about giants. But to me, it's yeah. 
And we did, we just finished doing a dwarf episode, the dwarf people of Florida. Solidarity the, with the Iridian dwarves. I'm glad you did yeah. that. And the homunculus here in Florida. It's very interesting. I think there's a lot of, uh, Florida's, the history is rich. And I mean, it like how Narco was saying, a lot of NPCs will say, oh, it's just too hot or whatever. It's mosquito ridden. But this is an 1887 dude saying, saying hey, we can sleep outside without a net, bro. So imagine that 1887. Can you imagine the last frontier? That's what Florida was. And, and they're beautiful. sleeping outside. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what for- happened? Why? Oh, good. I forgot. What did I say I was going to pull up? You were going to pull up proof of the 350 year old giants in Florida. Oh, uh, okay. Timaku- yes, yes, Timakua. Yes, 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 yes. Timakua. Thank you. Okay. See, I'm ready. Right. I'm ready to share. Oh, yeah. Just share and then I'll uh, let your screen in there. Boom. Bam. Done. Hey, look at us. I love the feedback loop. All right. You see my screen? Yeah. Okay. These are, this is a French account of the Temucua when they landed on the uh, northwest, northeast coast of Florida, um, parts of uh, South Carolina too, same culture. Uh, Land of the Crescent, as we're going to get to, the Gulf of Mexico is the true cradle of civilization, the Fertile Crescent, but we'll get into that. Blah, blah, blah. So you can read here. You guys can see that good. Uh, Do the picture and then do the words. Make it as wide as you can. Double okay. it. There you go. Okay. So these are the Temucua. This is them preparing for a feast. Those girls have some pretty long hair. We were just looking at hair. Mm-hmm. And cool hats, Pre- too. And baby got a map, too, baby. For a feast. Okay. However, although they hold great feasts in their own way, Yet they are temperate in their hundred wait in their eating, as a result of which they live for a long time. For one of their chiefs assured me that he was three hundred years old, and that his father, whom he showed me, was fifty years older than he. And I can truly say that when I saw him, I thought I was looking at no more than human bones covered with skin. They certainly put Christians to shame who reduce their lifespan by holding immoderate feasts and drinking parties. Right. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so they used to do fasting, and, you know, Christians used to have fasts that became break fasts, that became feasts, and uh, then we started dying of cancer. And then look at these guys living 350 years. And, okay. and they used to swap blood, by the way. They used to do transfusions of blood from one another. What? So the, All of a sudden, you took this to a Rolling Stone place I didn't expect. So they're No, vampires. I'm serious. They did blood transfusions? or They like did. Medical? Yeah, I'll pull up the information, but they did blood transfusions, so they would swap each other's bloods. To be fair, I'm not that surprised. Like, you look at, like, Mayans and Aztecs, they have drills in the skulls, they have all kinds of advanced medicine. They're worshipping a monolith there, dude. They're worshipping that and a stuffed with deer, a, too. With a fleur yeah. de lis on it. With so these are, these were Huguenots who came French. I'm telling you, bro, the Arcadians have been burnt away from the Florida story. There's, there's, like all there's these multiple. About it, but... There's multiple Arcadias in Florida. There's an Arcadia city and many, many neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. The word Ar- uh, Arcadia. And you know this, obviously, but the word Cajun is a contraction of Arcadian. And so uh, a lot of, yeah. I did not know, I did not know that. Yeah, that's a fun Thank link. You. Yeah, that's a secret there. <laughs> well, let, well, we're going to get into the Crescent. And New Orleans is the Crescent City, right? The city of the Oh, Crescent. my God. All right, keep Flirt, going. I never thought about that. Never thought about the moon and the Muslims and the connection to the Ladinos with it. Oh, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna blow your mind. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> okay. The chief Athor is an extremely handsome man, intelligent, reliable, strong, of exceptional height, exceeding our tallest man by a foot and a half. Now, I found out that their tallest man on this French expedition was about six foot three. Okay. So <laughs> All right. That that puts it that puts this guy at about seven foot nine, almost eight feet tall. <laughs> Fits the profile. And uh, you know, this little tidbit at the end, um, close your ears, guys. He married his mother and by her raised more children of <laughs> of both sexes. Uh, are you reading, are you reading from the box saga all of a sudden? What the fuck? <laughs> oh sorry, but, sorry, uh, I mean to hit that one. <laughs> that is very that is very a box saga though. I don't know, keep going. So also just think about for those who know their astrology um, mm. or who, who want some astrology um, or even if people considering this story to be fake, I, this would be the place that I would start looking is that the, this chief, uh, the primary king, his name is Athor. 
Well, that's Thor, that's Arthur, that's Jupiter, okay? That's Thor. His father's name is Saturiwa. That's Saturn. <laughs> Ar Arthur, uh, Thor's father was Saturn, you know? Right. Um, Jupiter's father was Saturn, or whatever Jupiter, um, yeah. mythology you, you want to use. Yeah, Zeus, Kronos, right. whatever. Right. But uh, you get where I'm going with that. That's pretty good. That's not bad at all. I mean, so I don't know if you've seen some of Ari's uh, videos on the Saturn in the sky, equal size with the moon and the sun and the, the time period that shifts. Do you have thoughts on like a kind of astro? I mean, a lot of time we talk about the reset being uh, Tartarian volcano power plants shutting down. Do you think, though, that the comet in the sky and all that stuff, uh, Tecumseh's uh, black sun disk, all that stuff, do you think that there's a – what's that transition about? There's events – that that pop up there's you know phenomena there's always been the sun and there's always been the moon and there always will be the sun's not going anywhere the moon's not going anywhere the moon's not a broken off piece of the earth that's <laughs> masculine and feminine you're looking at so as long as masculine and feminine are still principles you will have a moon in the sky and a sun Dude. in the sky but then so the astronomical story of Thea and Earth colliding is the rib being pulled out. Oh, man, that's a, I'm a sucker for metaphor. That's pretty brutal that they did that with science. Mm -hmm. Now, the now the moon might have gotten beaten up a little bit because it does look like it's been beaten up a little bit. But the moon is actually selenite, believe it or mm -hmm. not. Selenite. I get a monatomic uh, shale that has selenite in it, and apparently it's really good for you. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, well, um, you know, Saturn in the sky, brimstone is what melted like sulfur, essentially. Um, Saturn rules sulfur. So there's your Saturn in the sky, the devil, the Lord reigning brimstone. What do you think I'm, about the I'm sure there are events that trigger things like that. And you would see something in the sky that is Saturn's doing Saturn's. But you, you don't know. think Saturn was the same size as the moon and the sun? No, that's that's ridiculous. That's okay. that's folly. You know, okay. and, you, and the, the Ptolemaic worldview is is the map of the universe. It's not a, an age, you know. The sun and the moon have always been here, and they always will be. You know, as to whether one maybe got sped up, you know, maybe someone twisted the hand on that clock a little too quick, and mm -hmm. the moon started speeding up faster than the sun, and they might have both been equal, because they're equal size. They're exact equal size. on They're mean size of the sun and moon from our perspective regardless of what model you're on geocentric heliocentric Just are the same yeah same exact size so that should be discomforting to everyone with a brain that the sun and the moon are the exact same size from our perspective no matter what model you're on nasa okay. wouldn't lie to me though narco don't say that dude but if you teach a kid young enough to believe <laughs> santa claus you know and then you tell, take away santa claus from them and if you teach them that the heliocentric model is real and then you take away Santa Claus. You see where I'm going with this? Like, we can save a lot of kids. I think it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you want to save kids from Santa, you're saving them from Saturn. Because mm -hmm. Santa actually is Saturn. Mm -hmm. Santa yeah. is Satan. Elaborate on this, because I think, you know, some people have been like, Santa's not Satan. And I hear that and all. Because Satan is kind of phosphorus and Venus. But Saturn. Well, Christmas comes from Saturnalia, which yeah. is the Let's get into the Saturn. Saturnalia, Saturn aspect of Santa Claus. Saturn. So saturn is santa santa is satan without a doubt and i'll tell you why uh santa doesn't belong in the christian um in the christian uh cosmology right, right. San santa is a heretical uh you know icon essentially <laughs> saint nicholas saint is like moses i give you toys all right all right well saint nicholas <laughs> is something else because you know there's so many uh, candidates for who this Jesus guy was, but the Jesus myth remains the same. So the Santa archetype is the grandfather, the stepfather, the old man Saturn, old man Kronos right. at the North Pole where the sun does not shine. Right? Presence before New Year's, yeah. So, and of course he represents Capricorn where Saturn rules Capricorn. Um, so this is, and hell is winter, winter is hell. Okay, invierno is how you say uh, winter in Latin. Infierno is how you say hell in Latin. So those I love are the same a man word. who speaks multiple languages. Hell froze Latin, over. Gets me in my Catholic schoolboy. All right. <clears throat> um, what were we talking about? 
Saturn, oh. Inferno, okay. Invierno. The, Santa, the, Santa is Saturn, and I'll tell hell you Hell is frozen over. Go ahead. Jesus would never punish you. You could kick Jesus in the face, and he would forgive you immediately, okay? Santa, yeah, but, however, is t- keeping tabs on everything you are doing. Judging. And he, he will karmically, uh, you know, he'll get you back for everything you do. He's such a motherfucker, he will put coal... In your stockings. Which Saturn. is usually the most valuable thing during the winter time. But uh, okay. Saturn rules coal <laughs> astrologically, alchemically. Saturn. Oh rules yes. Coal. And the diamonds. Okay. okay. Isn't right. that alchemical though, right? With the with the coal, and then it kind of leads into the, the locomotive because they use coal to power it and, and what's burning. A, what's a and stocking? And carbon and Saturn. What's a stocking? It's a sock, right? But why is it different than a sock? Where does it go up to? Instead of your ankle, where does it go up to? The fireplace? Your knee. Oh, okay. Capricorn rules the knees, the kneecaps. Oh, Capricorn. Saturn. Oof. S- okay. Saturn is the um uh the whatever. We don't we're talking about Florida. Florida's all about Pisces and Jupiter and Neptune. Neptune is the god of Atlantis, Poseidon, right? We had the Celestial Railroad, too, right? And there was a Mars, Florida. There's a Jupiter, Florida. There was a mm-hmm. Venus, Florida. So these guys, they're, 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 you know, they're trying to do it like a sort of projection. The guys who founded Florida, a lot of people say that they're not occultists, but I 100% think that they were onto some alchemical trying to transmute something, trying to transmute literally the ages from one thing to the next and with There's all these like buildings 16 taxpayers that are not occultists and you know they don't interfere with too much of our society um do you want to show us the uh, confederate flag of the muskogee nation i'll pull it up for you really quickly you posted sure. this talk about it okay i actually did not know this ex- existed until freaking what <laughs> until this morning and that's coming from from me who has spent almost the last six months diving deep into Seminole history, Muskogee Creek, Miccosukee. Those are all <laughs> who knew the, tri- of- the native tribes of America were Muslim. I had no idea. This is amazing. Well, right there in the name, you have Muskogee. Muz is the same phonetic root as Muslim. Okay. And Muskogee, the Muskogee, they actually sided with Mexico, with Montezuma. So mm-hmm. they were on, they were over here in Oklahoma and Arkansas, right? And uh, North Florida. And when Montezuma needed aid, they supported Montezuma. Now, how does Mexico fit in? Mexico, well, let's zoom out a little bit. The Gulf of Mexico is the Fertile Crescent. There is one Fertile Crescent on this good earth. One, one only. That is both crescent shaped and a fertile and fertile. Mesopotamia in the Middle East is neither fertile at all whatsoever. It's arid. There's no <laughs> spring water whatsoever. Okay. Very, very little. It's kind of like the Holy Roman Empire, with neither Holy nor Roman nor an empire. I get your whole vibe. This is a lot more lively. The Gulf of Mexico is the perfect crescent, which you see uh, iconicized in. Mm-hmm. The, the uh, emblem of Islam, okay? Yeah. Islam is the fertile crescent, the crescent moon with the star, okay? Now... Moon that controls the tides. Now, I'm telling you, Mesopotamia is Mexopotamia, okay? <laughs> and you'll notice that both of these uh, uh, Mexican-Americans are referred to as Meso-Americans mm-hmm. or South Meso-Americans. So this is the same root word, and they'll tell you that it just means middle, right? Like middle American or middle, uh, you know. Very suspicious, yes. This is Mexopotamia. And from Mexo, Mexico, we get Olmec. Well, Mecca comes from Olmec and Mexico. So the original Mecca was in the Gulf of Mexico. And what is Mecca? It has the Kaaba, the cube. Well, what's the cube, the Kaaba? It is Cuba, the land of the cube. Dude, that's amazing. You're getting me here. I love it. Okay. And we're just using um, like biblical terminology. Well, you can go to the Greek 
and see, like you're talking about before, you have New Smyrna, Florida, you have Arcadia, Florida. Well, uh, we can look at. Dude, there's some a reason why they, they took Florida, they took Cuba from Florida. And like, it's such an amazing thing to think about. Like, Cuba, George Bush, the Bay of Pigs, the uh, Knights of the Golden Circle, how they wanted to destroy America and have a new capital out of Cuba that was going to be centered from Florida. The, uh, the new, and they wanted to, guess what they wanted to call it? New Atlantis, of wow. course. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. So the Cuba is also where the uh, Muscogee and Seminoles escaped to, the last surviving uh, native Floridians mm. escaped to Cuba officially. That's the official story. That makes a lot of sense. So what you have is Florida's, this is um, going to be their empire. They wanted this to be like Floridian or F Floridia land or something. Yeah. So people have heard the Nile is the Mississippi, right? And, you know, that's almost definitely true. If at least it's an equal equivalent to the Nile, right? People, I think too many people are in denial over this. <laughs> but Nice um, Disney World joke from the, the Jungle Cruise. I like it. <laughs> so... You know, what is Mesopotamia? It's Iraq, Syria, um, a little bit of Turkey, a little bit of Jordan. Well, Iraq, from Iraq, you get the words Iroquois. Hmm. You get, you even get Cherokee from Iraq because it's ha Raki. Right. Right. This is like an Arabic um, prefix, Cherokee, like, Han like Hanukkah, right? So Iroquois, Cherokee, um, Eric, the Eric, the Vic, all the Vikings, multiple Vikings came to America named Eric. So yeah, not only do you have Amerigo Vespucci, you have um, what was his name, Leif Erikson, who came to America, I believe. I could be wrong. Right, in 1066, ended up in Canada. Likely, they have the uh, Kensing, Kensington Rune Stone in Alexandria. Right. Oh yeah. So Runic is Punic, and that's going to bring us back to Atlantis as well. Runic is Punic. This is the number one secret that they will not allow to be uttered in. P's and R's. You know what's great is that the Cyrillic P is an R. Right. She Ro. Right. R. Mm -hmm. Cyrillic. Yeah. Well, you can even search. If you search runic punic, people have pointed this out. It's it's undeniable. You it's cannot. not it's you couldn't deny, it, but here's an example. The P is in R in Russian. So of course half of all of Eurasia is looking at the P is in R. So there's no way you're wrong. Exactly. And Phoenician is Finnish. Uh, I have not heard a single person saying that on YouTube. I've been screaming it from every rooftop I can. Finnish Thanks. is Phoenician. The only person who knew this was J.R.R. Tolkien, and he was so frustrated that no one would listen to him that he wrote the most magnificent uh, epic fantasy the world has ever seen. Because he knew, if you know the wellspring of language, right? And what's the wellspring of language? It's Welsh. And mm -hmm. he, he'll tell you that flat out. Well, it's Welsh and Finnish, primarily Finnish. Yeah. Fin Finnish and Welsh and Irish are these mystery languages that people don't know where they came from, right? And Basque too. But they right? yeah, there's there's they've found a lot of things like Basque is connected to the Japanese, has similar grammar. Mm -hmm. Um the the connections Finnish has 17 to 24 cases, which if you're looking for somebody who studied language and sounds, the Phoenicians would be the likeliest character to do that. Yes. And well, we're talking about the Creek natives a little bit. The Creek are the Greek. Creek natives are the Greek, okay? They also go by the Miccosukee or Seminole. Seminole is Semitic. These are Semitic mm. people. Just look at them. I have some uh, really, really good pictures if you want to see some really Semitic oh, please. looking. Yeah, if you, have, if you have anything, pull it up. I'm just uh, I'm just looking surf, around in the meantime. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, definitely, though, there's so many amazing examples. The Algonquin have Welsh in some of their language. Uh, the um, what's the other one? The Croatoan, the Cro Croatoan, the Croatoan have Welsh in their language. Uh, and then the connections between Welsh and Ugaric Tamil, which I'm hoping to have Sabri and Govinda, these two Tamil uh, friends of mine, do a thing talking about just the linguistic connections because nobody thinks that. Welsh is connected to an Eastern European language, and that's how they hide it. Like they just figure, don't double check. Mm -hmm. I guess. 
Well, Welsh is the wellspring of of many, many. That's in the word. Welsh is the wellspring of language. Is this is this guy wearing a fez right that's now? That's a fez on a Native American, quote unquote Native American. Um, yeah. Look at some and other very guys. similar. But the thing is that fez also reminded me of the Hebrew uh, hat, the big weird. Yes, square. yeah. These guys yeah. look like they could be in Brooklyn with their Semitic hats. Well, they're Seminoles. It's just a different suffix. Same root right. word, same prefix, different suffix. Those are some turbans and fezes. These are Native Americans. This wow. is extraordinary. And see, that's a Creek chief. Um, we see those gorgets on his ne uh, neck. That's a Celtic thing, largely. Not just Celtic, but they. Um, it's at the forefront of like Scottish... Uh, um dress where they get where the kilts and stuff they'll have their um their gorgets those are the wow. things down by their neck and the gorgets are well we're going to get to the gorgets when we talk about the crescent we're going to look at some crescent flags Dude, just, these two, guys... just two seconds because you're just blowing my mind too fast so first off we've seen this hat and you can see the connection obviously it's it's that kind of hat and the connection to the kava stone right because there's another kind of that hat which is this little tiny freaking kava stone so that's back to your cuba yep. and then the other one was this is if you go to the wikipedia page for jewish hat there's actually a kind of hat called the jewish hat and it is literally you had a picture earlier of these guys wearing these weird hats i forget the seven foot nine um floridians like the ladies had long hair and the guys had hats just like this. But this is one of the old Jewish hats that's basically lost. And if you look into Tartarians, you start to see that hat everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's similar to the Phrygian cap, kind of. Right. This guy's wearing a Phrygian cap a little bit. There you go. The Phrygian caps on all the flags, too, of any of the Mason states that they like left uh, Spain or Napoleon. They put a Phrygian cap on everything. So if you know how... Um... Arabic Arabic culture, even how this guy's reclining right here is a mm -hmm. dead giveaway of Arabic culture. Right. Um reclining Hanging out. Just to the side like that in inside a tent, you know. The Romans is, like to rip that off too. Yeah. This is Billy Bowlegs, one of the oldest. He was probably about 95 in this picture. The Seminoles, uh, just so you guys know, the Seminoles average six foot four, okay, and ninety-five years old is the average life expectancy of a Seminole in early Florida, right wow. up until the 1960s. Okay. Now the women, a lot of times with the women, you'll see they'll have a lot more of the like sub-Saharan African genes, or maybe even like Chilean, like Inca genes. But with the neck uh, stretching there, that's de definite African influence. So clear trading was going on before the Columbus triangular trade, right? Mm -hmm. This guy... He's up to no good. <laughs> well, he doesn't have his hand in his pocket. There's no hidden hand. I mean, he's like Ricky Bobby. He's like, what do I do with my hands? And but I like... also I see that Peruvian. Um, we might be doing sign language, but I see that Peruvian style hat too. That's kind oh, of you you want to know another huge connection that I know you're gonna have fun with, Andreas? Is sure. the Seminoles had some of the most blue and purple dye in the world? <laughs> okay. okay. Now, if you know, <laughs> if you know about the royal, the, so they're know very about royal the, people. Yes, exactly. They were They're, one of the five civilized tribes, by the way, and the five civilized tribes were regarded as equal, if not superior, to European culture. Why? Because they adapted the technology as soon as they were introduced. Yeah, but to there's it. more. There's more to that word, right? When you say civilized, what you're saying is non-barbaric. What you're saying is connected to the True. empire. You're saying and maybe not Roman, but it's something. It's like Hellenistic or something. It might be even deeper. See, like you're saying the Seminoles and the Semitic, it might be that they're civilized because they're Semitic. Yes, for sure. Er er ah, oh, You're not wrong, dude. I can see it right in the word. Phonetics is everything. Um, people are just afraid to make the leaps because they've never done it before. They're afraid to make the leaps between words. They, they think they'll be ridiculed or that it'll sound silly it's like child's play you know uh mish mishmashing words just for fun but it's actually AKA the, magic spelling it's actually exactly the science of light you know uh runic and is right up there with uh hebrew as far as you know uh it's like uh how do i Sig phrase sigil this? magic ge sigil, sigil magic, magic. Yeah. yeah light it's the science of light and how light refracts you can you can 
the runes and the ancient Hebrew alphabet. The ancient Hebrew alphabet comes from the, the runes, not the other way around. Okay, and Engl English is the oldest language on the planet, and you can verify this how. Well, it's the perfect intersection point between the two oldest alphabets in the world that we are told are allegedly completely unrelated. The phonetic alphabet, sorry, Phoenician alphabet and the runic alphabet, okay? Those are older than Sanskrit, by the way, guys. Sanskrit came from the north, right. north, west, not the other way around. And it was written down thousands of years after it was spoken, so we have no idea. Even it's like it was it was brought in by people. Yeah, it was it was brought in by people who had horses. So if, right. if the horse wasn't introduced till however <laughs> long ago, you know, sorry to burst your bubble, but um, yeah. here, hang on, I'm trying to stop. Okay, there we go. I mean, that's incredible, though. You think about the Tamil and also how the Tamil have been subjugated by the Indo-Aryans and the idea that their language is far older. And the, again, the connection is in the Tamil Ugaric to Finnish. Um, there's certainly a bunch of messing around with language. I'm curious what you think of when you say English is the oldest language. Do you mean like because like Shakespearean English, doesn't that? Yes, is that... sure. No. So English does not belong to England. That's a very recent, recent right. feat. OK, that Clearly. only happened. All the, la happens. all the signs are in the old language. So you try to go to read Green Witch and tell me what it says. You know, they don't know how to speak English in England. Mm -hmm. Not well. Exactly. So English is not an actual language. And many languages fall into that category today. Even German, where they were recently standardized, sometimes only, you know, 50 years ago. Usually. Descriptive design, yeah. Usually as a logistical necessity, because they're like, hey, we're going to war with a... Uh, and now you're in the army, so you need to speak the same as everyone else. That's usually how these standardized languages come to be. And the folk, the folksprech becomes, um, you know, uh, what's lower the class. Exactly. So yeah. English was not standardized until, I guess we're going to go down a Shakespeare rabbit hole here. I love Shakespeare. Um, or whoever he is. Exactly. So. <laughs> John D was tasked by Queen Elizabeth with standardizing the English language. Okay. That remember he was interested him and Francis Bacon were, uh, you know, in the beginnings of the English empire, England was not even a country at this point. It was a Viking, a Viking outpost essentially, right? It was contended land between right. Vikings, Danes, God knows who else. Spanish it was armadas. like India when Alexander the Great got there. A lot of little exactly. kingdoms and chieftains, yeah. So you know, you have the Black Irish too. Who are they? We don't know. You know, are they are they the bastards of a Spanish armada, or are they a pygmy race of dark skinned people? Picks. Hopefully, the Picts. Let's hope. You know, we don't know. Picts too. Yeah, a picture. Well, where do pixies come from? Mm -hmm. Picts. Yep. Where do fairies come from? The fair-haired people. Where do the elves come from? The elvens, the Finns, the elven. And Finnegan okay. is Phoenician. Finnegan is Phoenician. Finnegan's wake. Oh um, yeah, it's the wake of the Phoenicians. Who? who but paid. you've got so you've got uh, John D. Um, Cecil Rhodes though, and then Devere. Are they involved, or how's this going with the Queen's plan? Now people. You know, people like to argue about who Shakespeare really was, but it started with John D. For okay. sure, it you started number, with John D. The numbers prove it. Seventeen forty-two, right? Yeah, John D. Kicked off that mission, the mission that was Shakespeare, and the mission was this: Queen Elizabeth needed the English language standardized, English language standardized, and the English religion standardized. So, a group of scholars in England came together, and this is official, came together and started standardizing the English language. They were looking at old English poetry, Welsh poetry, you know, um, everything, everything that was getting mixed into England, and they were synthesizing it into something that was beautiful and had the possibility of being a uh, language that could rival the French, which had just been standardized in a right. similar in a similar process. And very few French spoke French up until they standardized it. Exactly. So the English nobility was speaking uh, better French than the French were right. at that time during the King Henrys. The King Henrys were all speaking French um, for the most part, and the English commoners were either speaking Dutch. Uh, Welsh, Viking, God knows what Viking tongue, 
And they were all Germanic, so Cornish, so. Anglo Frisian. Yeah, right. The Anglo Frisian yeah. made it for a while. Yeah. I'm surprised. Good job. Exactly. Best runner up for England's language. So how does England come out of this being the oldest language if we're talking about how it was created? Well, because phonetics does not belong to right. Phoenicia. It's freaking phonetics, Swahili. It's a create, yeah. Phonetics is an approach to, to written language. Okay. So written language was not invented with the Phoenicians, but phonetic language was where you have one syllable or one sound equals one letter for the most part. The advent of that writing style, okay, coincided with the advent of agriculture, um, religion, organized religion, not in the bad sense, but, you know, mythology, this this sync syncretic mythology that Cosmic, all the world shares. Cosmogony, yeah. Pyramid building, agriculture, domesticated animal, and written Math, language all, all came out of the North Pole at the same time after the recent Ice Age. Atlantis was the outpost of this Arctic people that encompassed much of North America, and their capital seaport was Tampa Bay, Florida, because wow. that's where the Gulf Stream uh, lands from the North Pole. It goes from the North Free Pole. Free energy, follow the stream, right. Right. So how is English the oldest language? It's because it is the intersection point between Phoenician and runic, which we are told are officially completely unrelated. Right. <laughs> and yes, but, I, am, I am drawing from the box saga in this. No, it's awesome. We love the box but, um, saga, but it's, I'm, it's, it, it's interesting. Cause you think about the idea that, oh, sorry, you're going to say, no, it's okay. Keep going. Well, just, just the idea that, um, that the, the, the ancient, the, so English is an idea and the language, it doesn't look, whatever words you want to use. I could be in California and I could say like sayonara amigo, which is like Japanese and Spanish in an English grammar. So that English grammar, this is a trade language, the Swahili of the world. And it is clearly ancient and it's mm -hmm. so flexible that people can change all the words and it can still be the same language. That is the, as a fact. And it's amazing. English is the modern Phoenician. Phoenician was the standardized. The Phoenicians did not even speak uh, Phoenician at, at home. It's starting to, to seem like because they have no written history whatsoever. And you could say, well, the Romans and Greeks destroyed it all. They aren't that good at destroying stuff. OK, right. There's no Phoenician history, just like there's no Irish history. You get 10 kings and then it cuts off and there's no Irish history whatsoever. OK, there's no Basque history. All you have is their local mythologies that they that they cling to as the churches try and genocide them off the face where of the does earth. Um, where does king james fall into all this because we're talking about elizabeth okay. john d and then you have the push for the king james version of the bible and you know you have the connection there with francis bacon yes. supposed to be in the editor what what does is that was that a psyop of some sorts because i think that language is at the core of a lot of things and we're talking about adopting it as the the one not, not one world religion but one world language almost like if you look at the original alphabet it was only what 17 19 letters and now they added all these sigils and glyphs and symbols to it almost to demystify it in some sort of way and then people are saying in the chat hey it doesn't make any sense sometimes the sounds of the letters put together it says you know in one way it's it's this sound but then you add one more thing and it completely changes it around so it's like paradoxical in a way but where does king james fall into this whole thing in the king james bible so king james work works into this because king james succeeded queen elizabeth the first now elizabeth the first put into motion this mission to standardize the english language and that was being done with john d and a group of scholars who were overtly working on standardizing the english language but from that from that gathering of people you know, interesting scholars, poets, uh, getting together and standardizing that language. They, she also tasked them with using that standardized language to print the Bible in the English language for the very first time. So the King James Version Bible almost was the Queen Elizabeth Version Bible. Okay. That's how it was supposed to be. And it was going to be a lot more trippy. Okay. I can guarantee that because she was down with the astrology. She was down with the, you know, the fairy um, queen. Yeah. She was down with the, with the occult. And have... she willingly ended the, um, she knew she was descended from a rotten family. 
<clears throat> and she willingly ended her her bloodline. And you could say she might have had mm. a, bas- a bastard or two and b- might have hit some babies. A homunculus but, um, or two, if you will. But they made sure that uh, <laughs> Devere, if Devere was her bastard, they made sure he did not become king. And exactly. so there's a, any example where there, I mean, Cecil Rhodes was very quick to get rid of anybody who could have been mm-hmm. there. So it started with it started with D this mission, and and as they were coming up with the King James Version Bible, which took you know probably at least two decades to finalize, as that was going on, you had them saying, "Well, this is pretty damn fun, and there's a lot more that we want to tell than what we're allowed to put in the King James Version Bible." So that's where Shakespeare comes into into play. Shakespeare was like the outlet for the more playful more dirty, more, um, you know, comedic, uh, accessible, accessible and the poetic parts that wouldn't make the cut into the Bible, but would give them all this flexibility to weave all this, you know, poetic nuance into it that they could only kind of squeeze in uh, very stiffly into the King James version Bible. Hmm. So King James version Bible and William Shakespeare's complete works were being created largely at the same time by the same group of people for the same purpose to standardize the english language um, for religious means with this with the printing of the bible but also um socially you know like pop culture of the day they wanted to to uh work at it from that angle too so that's where shakespeare came into it right and we could do a whole nother talk on shakespeare i'm sure but um this all this all relates because to bring it back to the English, they were trying to fix English. English does not belong to England. Right. That's that's a new oh. thing. Okay, that's a new thing. England is Anglish, angular writing. All all you're saying when you're saying Anglo or English is angular, which is also runic, because runes are hard angles. This is a language, mm. a text system Built that under is degrees. Using hard angles you go over to islam or you know uh arab uh the middle east and you start how you see how they write their script it's all flowy and and feminine and it's script and except there's for, no hard for, angles except for kufic right so the original version of arabic was like this and uh yes. all hard angles so well that's no that's not a phonetic language that's uh, pictorial or whatever you'd call it. Hieroglyph. This is, this is, this is Arabic. This is Arabic language. Kufic is just the original way they wrote the script. It's a phonetic okay. it is a phonetic. So eventually they started in Spain getting more sw- swimmy and in Persians that were Ladino. But for instance, this says Allah, 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 uh, Muhammad it says Ali, Ali, Ali and Muhammad, 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 right. Four times in the spiral. So there is kind of an art to it, but it is mm-hmm. phonetic. You did a you did a video on this in like QR codes, right? How QR and QFIC are yeah. very similar, right? I think that they, I mean, so Ewing Jr. thinks they're connected. I think they could be. I'm always open to like, it's possible someone accidentally made a QR code look exactly like ancient QFIC. I mean, it's possible. I'm open-minded. But yeah, that's pretty dang on the nose, right? So English... When we're saying it's the oldest language, all you're saying is that it's the modern Phoenician. And Phoenician is the oldest alphabetic language, right? Phonetic language. And thousands of years ago, you would you could go to any port in the known world and someone would be speaking Phoenician, any trade center in the world. Well, you go to any trade center of trade in the world today and they're largely going to be speaking English. And that's because it is the most bare bones, easy to learn, pick up phonetic language that, that there is. So, I go, we go, you go. Right. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> even Dutch fit this bill at the time when Dutch, uh, the Dutch Navy ruled the world. Um, so, you know, it's the same deal. The English Navy ruled the world and now it's pretty much American English that dominates, um, dominates financial, the financial world, you know, but well, you're thinking the Phoenicians didn't necessarily speak this language in their home. It could have been just a trade language developed, you think, like Esperanza or yes. something? Yes, yes. They could yeah. they could roll up to any land, foreign land, and teach anyone with a high enough IQ Phoenician on the spot, and they could even teach them, you know, sentences within a, a matter of hours. 
you know, hmm. I'm, I'm confident of this because it's so simple. And how, finish uh, ties into this because Juan, you said there's all these in, inconsistencies with English, right? How like why is the k sound sometimes a c, sometimes a k, sometimes mm. a, a ck, sometimes a q? It's one of the hardest well, languages to learn. Finnish rectifies that, and it's it's usually a root finish where no one syllable has more than one letter attributed to it, and that's mm. uh, what makes Finnish very very special. Uh, is that one letter equals one sound? So Finnish is the most phonetic language in the world. So that tells you right there if you've ever seen a finnish uh, figurine ancient finnish figurine and an ancient phoenician figurine they're the same exact same a finnish boat a viking boat is a phoenician boat same sails same everything but they're both dragon boats have dragons on their sterns mm -hmm. um so phoenician was an order you know shout out to ben from waking analog. up with analog uh you know, he really introduced that me to that. Phoenician was an order, and it was a brotherhood. So I, I kind of knew that. What he taught me was about the order of the Q, right? The Q, and this ties back into Cuba because these ancient mariners were definitely coming to the, the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, the Gulf of Mexico is probably the best kept secret on the planet. Uh, now I'd like to show you some. I said earlier, it's the Fertile Crescent. The Gulf of Mexico is the Fertile Crescent, right? Well, I'm going to prove that to you guys right now. And it's Monday right right now. So Monday, what a what a great day. Moon days are fun. The Crescent okay. Moon. Close to Mars Day, though. We're almost there. <laughs> That's fun for me. In, in English, they like kind of confuse you because you've got Tuesday and uh wednesday instead of uh, mars day and miercoles mercury day i mean yeah everyone else knows what's yeah, going on we're naming days of the week of, of gods from other religions <laughs> you know what's like, the yeah same not even all the same day. religion thor and freya okay we're getting kind of weird next to saturn i see what's going on here yeah yeah it's like a, it's like a Shit. like a that chimera that they're trying to form <laughs> i got lost like a homunculus not all who wander are lost Okay, here's Alabama. So all Al words are Arabic. Alabama. Al Habam. Habam. Okay. This Habibi. is also Alhambra. Alhambra. Right. Whoa. This is an this is a Confederate flag of Alabama right here with the serpent and the crescent crescent moon on it. With what is that? Seven. What is that? The Pleiades. So mm -hmm. also more Taurus Venus. Don't tread on me. Is that what that's all about? probably yeah yeah definitely the you know george washington and the cherry tree the morocco flag you know all this right george, yes. george washington was clearly a more so, exactly that looks like a moroccan flag alabama right. with the green even and the stars around it no one i don't know if we saw the fine print of stars around that star yeah there's a lot, a lot someone of said there. arab is a town in alabama is that true yes oh yes 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 yes, yes. Wow. there's also um i mean you could if you want to include the greek that's a whole nother video you have Alexandria, Athens, Memphis, Cairo, Arcadia, mm -hmm. Haiti. Haiti is Hades. Um, New Smyrna, Naples. The list goes on and on and on. Tallahassee is Tallahassee. Taala. A lot. Right. All right. Let's yeah, make some more. Of these. Mobile, all of, Mobile, Alabama used to be called Mavilla, which was the well, Choctaw it's name. It's Mabilla, which is Alabama backwards. Yeah. Mabilla. Yeah. <laughs> um arkansas i didn't get enough arkansas is the ark by the way <laughs> floating down the mississippi river oh interesting mm. um crescent city florida a lot of redheads and giants in arkansas so the gulf of mexico is the fertile crescent and the fertile is that crescent. still around today narco crescent city yes i've never heard about that before you ready for a good one Whoa. I don't know. It might it might just be like a town. It might not be like a full blown mm -hmm. city. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, Crescent City, Florida. Whoa. Well, there's a couple other other Crescent cities along the Gulf of Mexico. So now, wait, you guys are gonna. This next picture is gonna blow your mind. Crescent Moon brand. So this is a Florida orange juice brand. <laughs> more juice. They're calling orange juice more juice. No way. 
Crescent City Fruit Co. Crescent City, Florida. More That's juice. That's kind of in your face. Okay. Now let's go look at... I mean, you know, the Ma- the Masons, you have the Shriners. And Louisiana, of course, you have a lot of connections to, like, Nation of Islam. But none of this stuff is from the 60s. Well, it is, but it's from the 1860s, 1760s. This isn't from recent enough time to be anything else. So this is New Orleans. New Orleans was known as the Crescent City, right? right. There's the Florida Lee, the Florida Lee, Florida, Florida. Here is wow. here are our old um, sewer lids, sewer caps. How many stars is that? Seven Pleiades. stars. Is that the Pleiades so, again? Yep, it should be seven stars. Three on the right, on the east, and then five on the west, or whatever, or four on the west. Cast iron water meter cover. And I've got more. Two two dudes in Florida hagg- haggling over some flocka. <laughs> <laughs> This is South Carolina, of course. And South Carolina actually was part of old Florida. Um, Florida extended up to South Carolina and over to Texas, pretty much. Florida included, so Florida and Louisiana, right? So the part of, uh, yeah, okay, Florida. But part of the Louisiana co- uh, territories. So there were trappers and traders that were going to like Minneapolis, Minnesota and back to Florida. It was a pretty huge uh, nomadic thing, supposedly. Yeah. And Narco, is there any of this symbolism other than obviously the Fleur de Lis on the Bach Tower? Because obviously these were guys that were in the know of, of all these right. things. Is there? I know the Fleur de Lis, you have Neptune on there. You have a whole bunch of weird symbolism. I know well, we talked the, about plant Fleur, last night. The Fleur de Lis is the B, right? So it's the symbol of the serious B as opposed to serious A. Mm. Uh, that's funny. Nice. Never, yeah, never if you ever... If you, if you ever look at the original Fleur de Lis pictures, like the ancient, let me see if I can mm-hmm. find. Oh, oh yeah, find. it's a B. Yeah, I, I hadn't heard the serious B part though. Oh right, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So to answer your question, Juan, um, we don't see that specifically, but in Tampa, wait, what did you ask? Sorry. I said if there's any symbolism of the of the crescent. I know we have the Neptune and all that on the Bach Tower. So not the Bach. Is that a Tower. picture of garlic? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not the Bach Tower, but this is Tampa Bay, the um, Tampa Bay Hotel that we were just talking about uh, yesterday. Mm-hmm. I got a bunch of videos on. Dude, every so, single thing you're showing me right now is Alibaba. You're showing me like Jafar's palace. <laughs> yeah, dude. dude. This is Tampa Bay, Florida. Can I just get back for one second? Let me look at that. Not the garlic, the newer one. The, the next one? one. One more forward. The one that has Yakum and Boaz pillars underneath it. Like a rocket ship. Okay, I feel better. All right. That's that it. The that two one. pillar the two pillars underneath the it's supported by two pillars is mm-hmm. all. Uh, That's the Bank of Tampa. <laughs> oh, and here's your Jolly Rouge. <laughs> so Tampa's the Buccaneers and what are our pilot uh, pirate swords? Pirate swords are always uh, scimitars. They're mm-hmm. never they're never Western European. That's uh, a saber, right? no? Well, it's a uh, Arabic like what's it called? Uh who's the guy in the sea? The Sinbad in the Seven Seas. Mm-hmm. He has the, the saber. Yeah, but also the red flag. So the skull and crossbones. Pirates didn't use skull and crossbones, obviously, because you know what would you do? Announce, hey guys, we're coming to rob your ship. Check out my flag. They're gonna use a fake flag and come up to you. The pirates' flag that we're mm. used to was actually the banking ship's flag. Interesting. Yeah, so, and Jolly Roger used to be rouge, which was why the red skull. Yeah, yeah. and that's connected to the Dutch. And the Rus, the Rus Vikings. Yeah, the red to orange though is you can see how that that's a fun switch. All right. So, right now, you guys can still see my screen? Yep. Mm-hmm. We're looking crescent. at the Golden Crescent. Now, if you've been following my channel, you know how much Tarpon Springs, Florida, just north of Tampa Bay area, plays into all this. Tarpon Springs is the most Greek place outside of Greece. It's the most Greek city in America. Uh, has the highest amount of Greek people, blah, blah, blah. Um, the Greek Orthodox Church makes a makes a uh, visit there once a year and in this bay they toss a cross and the boys age 16 to 18 go diving in for the cross and a a, a greek orthodox minister tosses it into the lake and they go and they die for this and this lake (laughs) 
this lake uh, Juan Ponce de Leon sailed in on, sailed into because it's connected to the ocean. And he called it the Ancloak River or the Anglo, the Angels River, right? He's, he called it the Espiritu, Espiritu Santo, like the Holy Spirit River. And today it's called the Ancloat, which is phonetically the Anglo Angelic River. And there's uh, a, sp a spring Atlantis, in this place. Atlantis yeah. Rising asks, so, what is, so who or what is Allah? What is Allah? Yeah. I mean, hey, I'm not a Muslim or anything, <laughs> but it's uh, it's God, you know? <laughs> Whoa, I like that. I like, I like Miguel Serrano has El Aya. So it's he, she in Spanish Arabic. So it's like the dynamic. Of My last name is Ayala. So, kind of. so I mean, it, it's a mirrored word. Allah, guy but down here. All is all is comes from L and L is so all L and hell are all the same word. So with Greek culture, you have hell, Hellenistic, Helvetic, hell this, hell that, Helios, right? Heliocentric. So that's hell. That's God too. L is the most most ancient word for God. L that we know of, the most ancient word for God. L, you get Elohim. It's the Phoenician word for God, and this is where you get Elvin. Elvin. Elvin was a a caste, right? So Elvin is Finnish or Phoenician or Vanesian, right? This was the white nobility before it became the black nobility. Not racial. Not racial. Um, colors. I'm right. saying before the mercantile class, which held the secrets of this, of traversing this plane, uh, <clears throat> usurped yeah. the Aryan caste, usurped the um, the Brahmins, the ecclesiastic class, and they made Aryan the worst word that you can say, because that was their old title. Right. So the Even those, those scientists still say Aryan gases when they refer to noble gases. Mm. Wow, I didn't know that either. Yeah, that's good. That's a good one. <laughs> um, where were we? Basically. Well, I'm sorry, I, I cut you off in a weird ADHD thing about law, but you were about to talk about the historical precedents for throwing a crucifix into the Crescent Bay so that a bunch of Christian Orthodox kids once a year could relive whatever the heck happened the last reset, right? Or what was the reason that they're throwing a crucifix in the pond? Uh, well, it's because they know how special that, that bay is. That bay is called Spring Bayou, that little, um, it's like a cul-de-sac, but made of water right and it comes in from the gulf of mexico into tarpon springs florida and basically tarpon springs florida you know i always say tampa bay was the capital seaport of atlantis well it was the, the primary seaport the central hub well where the royalty lived and mm. you know this is was tarpon springs this was like <laughs> the vi the vip club and you can see this when you see the canals going in there from the um from the air it's, and that P and the R again, which we don't know, right? Could be the Cyrillic or the Latin. Well, think about Tarpon too. Tar, tar, Tartarian Springs, Tarpon right. Springs, you know, the Tar yeah. Heels to Moors, right? right? So Tarpon Springs is, uh, people call Tarpons dragons too, um, because the way that they roll in the water, they look like sea monsters in the water. So Tarpons, a school of Tarpons, um, a lot of times what what you'd see as old sea monsters in these old like uh, French maps and stuff was actually a school of tarpons because the way that they roll together or even the way that one tarpon will roll will make it look like a very long snake like serpent. If you've ever seen tarpon roll on top of the water, you'll know what I'm talking about. And uh so there's your dragon, by the way, but um, there's your America dragon, possibly right. a, a tarpon. And there's, you know, dragon means a lot of things, of course. Francis Drake was, was in and around Florida, too. The Beowulf thing with the dragon. Oh, go ahead, Francis Drake, though, yeah. Well, Francis Drake, right. Um, he's kind of a founding father, an unofficial founding father of America, you know. Right. And... <clears throat> Uh, what was I? Oh, fuck, what was 
actually just talking about the Barbary Wars. I, I know you you've talked about the Barbary Wars. Well, did you know we were just talking about the Muskie? We're talking about Islam. This fits in perfectly. The Barbary Wars ended, okay, and the U.S. Navy literally went from uh, the north coast of Africa and immediately traveled to Key West, Florida. Okay. Hmm. And when they got there, they enacted martial law. Okay. <clears throat> and they took over the Florida Keys in the name of defense from piracy. So they wow. were just, they were just fighting, fighting Barber, Berber pirates in North Africa. They win that war. And then they immediately come over to South Florida and they start, they Indeed. enact what? martial war in the, exactly one coast at a time you know, one, one front at a time. They won that. They come over to Florida and start fighting the other front. At this exact same time, the Florida Seminole Wars start breaking out. Okay, and Florida becomes a U.S. state in 1821. Well, in Key West, which was under martial law, in 1820, there was not a single permanent resident of the Florida Keys. 1820. Not a single permanent resident, native or European because they were either killed or driven out, okay? By 1830, Key West was the richest city in America. It's all the gold they found, bro. Come on, man. Highest GDP in America. Probably found a lot of people's gold. I get it. Yeah. Well, that's what they tell you. Is It was all just shipwrecking. But how many... How many well, I'm sure they, cra- they wrecked some ships to get the gold. I mean. <laughs> how many scoundrels can there be in one city? Wouldn't all the scoundrels kill each other if it, these were all shipwreckers who were the richest? And these shipwreckers must have been paying their taxes, I guess, right? In right. order to, to be the uh, richest They're tar- Their Tartarian tariffs. So here's the thing also. Every video game, you can be a soldier or a scavenger or a scoundrel. What is a scoundrel again? Let me tell you. I'll tell you right there. Let me cut you off right there because yeah, it's it. huge. I've done it Scorpio. You. Scorpio. These are Scorpio words. Astrology Scorpio. is everything. You utter astrology and you don't even know it. Uh, <laughs> right? All you, all you viewers out there. <laughs> These are Scorpio words. Scorpio has a bad reputation. They're backstabbers. And I love Scorpios. I'm part Scorpio. Scorpio. Yeah. But the reputation, the the myth, mythological, you know, um, don't mess connotation. With them. Their backs, they they rule. So I won't say that. I won't say they. Scorpio rules backstabbing, betrayal, the underworld, grave digging. Um, I like how you walked back stereotyping sex. all Scorpios. That was pretty cool. Okay. Well, from the word Scorpio, you, and they're very competitive, the most competitive athletic sign, Scorpio. Okay. You get the words score, scoundrel, scar, scavenger um sucio which is dirty in spanish Mm -hmm. (laughs) scrape to scrape to scab um let me look at i've got those are the ones off the top of my head but let me look at the list i have it's interesting though because it's a legal term they're using while you're doing that uh scoundrel the fact that they're referring to these barber princes who have their own sovereign states essentially when they when Mm -hmm. you go to the caribbean and you have your own money and you have a treasure island i'm gonna go ahead and call that a sovereign state up until Mm -hmm. They didn't make a new war. They just continued the war against the Barbers. I, I, it's mm-hmm. very clear. North African people. Well, the Seminoles look North African. Right. Okay. Scare, scar, scandal, to scoot or scooter, to score, to scourge, scorn, scoundrel, scour, scrap, scry, skate, skank, like a whore. That's very Scorpio. The scrotum, scrotum too? It's to skeet. To skeet, you guys know what skeeting is. It, you're either I learned that from my brother who is a Scorpio, actually. Yeah. To sketch, or if something's sketchy, it's scary, right? Or skunk, if something smells terrible, right? Or oh, because uh, skunks are also very hmm. So all of these words come from Scorpio, and that that this is the beauty of phonetics. Okay, this is why each rune had a meaning because some sounds do have a meaning. How many? pleasant words can you think of that start with the word ska not very many ska is terrible ska is the worst type of music what Um, (laughs) (laughs) dang all right well that's that's off the table then okay but um this is also the scottish the scythians the scythians um the scots yeah the scooty same people you know it's interesting. Oh, no. The Scots are from Valentine. The Romans called it Valentine, and Valentine's got a whole thing with like 
the bow and forcing people together and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man. So, okay. So Florida basically has a number of these tribes are speaking their own languages and they're learning Phoenician and, or at least some of their traders are, or how, what is this before? <clears throat> so the Phoenician does not tie in like overtly to Florida. Um, Thank you, Jeremy. There are, that's my birthday, 1123, right there. So thank that's you. It's a lucky birthday. Good job. But, um, Illuminati confirmed. Same, same day as Miley Cyrus and Snooki. So, <laughs> two uh, days after my brothers. And you're still a Scorpio? Or you're just, you no, tipped I'm, into Sag or something? I'm, the, I'm, I'm Sagittarius. I'm the first yeah. day of Sagittarius. There you go. But um, I can see that. <laughs> very Scorpionic. But um, what were we talking about? Oh, well, the language is you're saying that the Phoenician thing doesn't really tie into the Confederate civilized tribes necessarily. Well, if you're going by, if you if you know that Phoenician is Finnish, then yes, the, the Holy Grail is right here in Florida. Lake Worth, Florida has the highest, Lantana, Florida, Lantana and Lake Worth, Florida, which are pretty, pretty much the same city, have the highest concentration of Finnish people outside of Finland. Well, if those are Phoenicians, then yes, you have Phoenicians living here in Florida. The Phoenicians also went by the name the Tribe of Dan a lot of the time. Right. Mark um, and Dan, the Vikings, Macedonia. Yeah. The Vikings. Well, here in Florida, you have Dania Beach, which was named for Danish, uh, for right. a Danish colony. Well, the Danish are the Tribe of Dan as well. And their red flag, like the, Cher the Cherokee and the Moroccans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You also have all these Seminole. Um, the Seminoles are the only tribe in America that never officially um yielded to right, the united right. they they never officially surrendered so the government made concessions to them not the other way around so they have like some of the most uh casinos and do you know where the word casino comes from the word casino it has you, you know there's a couple debatable origins the word casino comes from casina which is the seminal practice of taking a communal black psych psychedelic drink the black drink mm -hmm. and the black drink grows up and down in florida and black all these current liquor right all these tribes in, in america would trade to florida to get their black drink now uh the black drink which is yopon holly primarily a lot of different ingredients yopon holly probably some um other hollies florida hollies brazilian pepper tree maybe even but i heard currants <laughs> Well, maybe too. Yeah, Currants. Uh, um, basically, you have the most famous name for for uh, this drink is Osceola. So Osceola is the most famous Seminole chief. Well, there's one problem. He was never actually a chief, and his name's not actually Osceola. His name was Billy Powell. He was half Scottish. What? Well, he was a full bl full blown Celt. Okay, you had that picture of him. Do you want to pull that up again? He was wearing a fez that looked like the New Yorker hat, right? That was that guy. Yeah, I'll pull. No, that wasn't. I don't think that was him. Um, no. He no, he's wearing a gorget. I have a good picture of him wearing a gorget, though. So um, are those are those? Is the story of him is it bullshit or what? No, it's not bullshit. Uh, this was actually the most shameful event in, <clears throat> they'll even tell you this. If you Google most shameful event in American military history, mm -hmm. they will tell you it's one of three things. And one of those three is the capturing of Osceola under a white flag truce. Mm -hmm. They wanted Osceola so bad that they violated a white flag truce. Wow. Where Osceola bravely went out mm -hmm. and went and met with two Ameri or two or three American officers in peace talks. Then they put a gun to his head and said, you're, you're mine now, bitch, you know, yeah. get ready, get ready to go die in a star fort. And they imprisoned him in a star fort. That right. was the San Marcos, right? The, in the St. Augustine, St. Augustine star fort. Yeah. And so Osceola, that's where that name comes from. He took the name of that psychedelic brew that you would take. Mm. And, um, you know, the Seminoles were melt were multi-ethnic. So it's a lot of work <laughs> to grow my hair out, but I appreciate the idea. I, I get a fro and I'm not going to be as beautiful as, as Narco Longo. So. There's nothing more beautiful than the fro. Don't say that. All right. No, let's see know. that. Let's see that Taino tower. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, dude. No, no, no. 
never home. I know like uh, Angela Davis used to keep a gun in her afro. So, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do with it. <laughs> I mean, right. There's something going on with this, though. I mean, the more you so the Scots, the Valentine, the connection. What is that? Animations. Well, I just said Taina Tower. This is the Colt Tower in San Francisco, but it came up with the Tana Tower in San Francisco, right? It does look a little phallic. I think there's some more no, because it looks like the Bach Tower in Florida. That's why it, it looked hey. Colt Tower, San Francisco. Okay. Yeah, I typed in Taina. If I type what type? It's, ta- if I type it's in- Taino with an O. Okay. Taino. There you go. Freaking out of towners that come in here. <laughs> okay. This is uh is this the one the guy threw himself off of? It looks so much like the one from the that guy who was work, you know, Bed Bath and Beyond guy or whatever. Interesting. You know? Interesting. I mean, Wait. so you've got you've got this like weird thing going on then. If you've got a bunch of Native American tribes that are um well, okay, so they have indigenous nomadic people that have traveled and got and maybe have a trading empire and they've ended up in Scotland and they've ended up on the and anywhere that the Gulf Stream takes them, including to Florida. So then they're related. Even if he's from Scotland halfway, it's maybe because they're too mm-hmm. like it's no, like yeah, these were in Brooklyn, you know. The Seminoles, <laughs> the Seminoles are half North African, half Celtic. And if you know anything about the Moors, well, what are the Moors? The Moors are half North African half Celtic or it's Portugal Iberian. in a nutshell. Yeah, exactly. The Iberian Peninsula was all blonde Irish people until the Moors uh, strolled up officially. Right. Well, strolled the the um, the Seminoles and the Welsh Indians and all these Welsh people, they were cut off from a pre-existing empire. And when the European colonists start showing up, the ones that were part of this largely and you know we're it's it's kind of silly to say like our current world paradigm is the bad one and theirs was the good one um everyone kind of likes to think that way it's like, like to oversimplify yeah, yeah. It's, clearly it's they screwed up enough to lose their entire civilization calm down everybody yeah so the welsh the irish the scottish made up much of the seminal indians so how do you have and they're we're told that seminal means runaway runaway slaves oh right. so the run the runaway slaves this is their that's this very is their, uh, moses runaway slaves i'm sorry well this is also their half-assed attempt of explaining how these people look so un-american is they they say they have to be runaway slaves because they look african so they must be slaves well they're not the sub-saharan africans that were getting pulled into boats they were north african islamic people Bedouin. moorish people right that had a refined society in america right um they were wearing uh plaid the seminoles wore plaid out in the the everglades and stuff and what's plaid a pl- plaid is tart a tartan right tartan right and you if so, you look around africa if you go to like any major country in africa you'll find um tartar uh, tartan plaid plaid is very commonly the clothing used by the zulu etc who who was the who was the king um from the last king of scotland what was his name eben something Iben. i I I'll, I'll look it up really quickly last the last king of, king of scotland was like this uh african dictator who was obsessed with scotland and said since i because they had like a oh, technic- the film i haven't seen yeah it idi amin yeah, they had a they had a technical victory over England in like a like a technicality that wasn't actually a military victory. But he with that like technicality, he crowned himself. He's like, I, I defeated the British, right? And so he said, if I defeated England, then I must be the king of, of Scotland. And I, I think I'm probably mm. butchering that story. But I'm gonna have to watch he, this. he crowned himself the king of Scotland. And he said, I'm the rightful king of Scotland. Now, if you know anything about the Scythians and how Princess Scotia went from Egypt to British Isles, well, this makes a hell of a lot more sense. It right. could just be a, um, he could just be like a cannibalistic dictator that's just losing his mind. But, um, I mean, Princess you know. Scotia is an interesting aspect, right? The, 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 in, the, the thing that people seem to forget is that Excalibur and, uh, you know, King Artor, Archer, Artar, all of these stories, Merlin and his Setian magician um, practices, 
and of course Queen Scotia coming from uh, Egypt. I mean, this is part of the lore. So unless mm -hmm. we're going to completely discount everything that these people have, you know, this is why we have King of Scotland in the first place. They have their stones that they like to crown each other on. I mean, it's all it all comes back to the scone stone, right? Which is Jacob's ladder. He he put his head on the pillow that was a stone, and that's the only stone they can use to crown anybody anymore. Mm -hmm. I was just talking about that today with John Saxer. Really? <laughs> yeah, he was talking to me about how it's the uh, a fake stone. He, right. he calls it a toilet seat. How it's not? It's not the <laughs> right. real. Well, there's a like huge. A, yeah, there, there's a conspiracy about it, right? Because in the 70s, someone stole it and they dropped it in the gravel parking lot and supposedly chipped off a piece of it. And then they brought back and put the stone back on. And everyone who was old said this isn't the same stone. So there's a lot of evidence there. Plus the, the original piece that was broken off of it into the gravel. It's a weird Disney movie kind of story. It's probably so that they could take a piece of it or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. How much do you know about um, the stone anchors? Uh, I saw I stone. I saw a stone anchor in Bermuda. What do you? Uh, not a lot. I, that's one of the ways that they historically say Bermuda had people there before the Spanish got there. They have a Spanish uh, stone that is a stone anchor. So if you if if you could add to that search ancient stone anchor, you'll see right. some some good examples of what I'm about to show. So these are ancient stone anchors. Now we've been talking about like the Muslim origins of, of Florida and the Gulf of Mexico and Mecca, the old Mech, right? We were tying that in. Well, now we're going to kind of talk a little bit about the Atlantean connections. How is Florida Atlantis? Well, Atlantis was an ancient maritime culture, uh, supposedly greater than any any of you know the known ancient world. So those that would probably mean bigger ships, bigger people, bigger territory, one of the three, if not all of them. Well, stone anchors were used before, right? The cast iron anchors that are steel, whatever they use, modern anchors. And essentially up until like 500 years ago, uh, even, even earlier or more recent than that, this was the normal method of deploying an anchor was to throw a big rock with a hole in it over the side of the boat and this was you know effective it's just a crude anchor and this was done for thousands of years thousands and thousands of years and you can tell how rich of a maritime culture a region had based off of how many of these you find in the vicinity hmm. right and the larger the anchor the larger the boat the larger the civilization the more widespread the civilization they're not small. Well, and there's all, again, so this is what I saw when I was in Bermuda, just like this, had a bunch of runes on it, though, not just crosses, runes. And so that's yes. how they were like, they called it Spanish rock, and it says Portuguese rock. And they said, well, it must have Galatian stuff written on it. Mm -hmm. runes. Well, that one has the Templar crosses on it because the Templars showed up there during uh, right around the Crusades. And they said, wow, this is where Noah landed, obviously. <laughs> and they, they carved their, they were kind of taking selfies in front of it. That's what those crosses are right there. Well, that stone anchor comes from Georgia. That's that one right there. Oh, that the giant, the, the giant yes, one. I was looking the at one here. on the one on the that is on the mountains of Ararat. That is the stone anchor of oh. all stone anchors. That is Noah's very stone anchor, by the oh, way. Ararat. Wow. That wow. is on the mountains of Ararat. That is. And they Noah's, came through, scraped it off, and then put their little crosses on it. That is Noah's stone anchor. And the Templars knew that, and they signified that by etching on it. And that is on the mountains of Ararat, where if after a flood you were set, set afloat from the Gulf of Mexico, you would wash up right into either the Baltic Sea or the mountains of Ararat if the sea levels was 500 feet higher. Okay? Wow because of the Gulf Stream. You would float right over, and this is where, so what I'm getting at is, and you see they, they've even made, yes, yeah, they even made a stone anchor out of that hieroglyphic uh, tablet. Wow. What I'm getting at is this. You find today ancient stone anchors, which are a real thing. We're looking at them right now. Ancient stone anchors, you find them primarily in two places, the Mediterranean Sea and Polynesia, Indonesia area. Right, the two most rich maritime cultures of the ancient world. Well, 
on average, these ones you're looking at in the Mediterranean and the Pacific are on average about 300 to 500 pounds, and they're about the size of a backpack, okay? That one on Mount Ararat, that one's exceptionally large. That one's at least yeah. 8,000 8, pounds. That's from when Noah was a giant. I hear you. Well, if you, if you don't know about these, you're about to have your mind blown. Uh, Florida has not only the oldest ancient stone anchors in the world, but really? the largest. Oh, you won't find any pictures. You'll find you'll find no pictures. This is Florida stone anchor. That's one picture. See, well, that's that's a normal <laughs> size stone anchor. What, I, okay. what oh, I'm about giant. to show you. Okay. And you guys that's mentioned you guys mentioned the Henrys. To, Go ahead. What I'm about to show you is the Saxer stones, the ancient stone anchors of Atlantis. Like now, I'm not saying count. Saxer is Scorpio, but it's a little close. <laughs> well, it's Sagittarius, actually. He is a Sagittarius. He's he's descended from a noble bloodline, John Saxer. And how can Saxer. you tell that? Because he's a Sagittarius, a Sagittarius, Sax, Saxer. And the men in his family down the line probably would have been Sagittarius. It's just like how Eeyore Bach, which Bach means goat was a Capricorn himself, the goat. His father before him was a Capricorn, the goat, and so far back into uh, perpetuity, essentially. Brittany point, pointing out Edley Scanlon. Just a shout out to all Floridians who build Egyptian super megaliths. You know, we love you. And uh, What did I text you the other day, Narco? What? She said that the uh, a book in every home by Edward Lee Scanlon is a encrypted slash code so uh, i was just texting narco about that the other day actually when we covered the bach tower it is really because an interesting book because sweet 16 has to do with 16 polarized magnets virgin mm -hmm. magnets which is why it looks creepy yes. when you read that book but oh it's it's entirely allegorical that the whole story that he's reciting to everyone that visits his his a uh, little place the coral castle i've been there <laughs> little place yeah <laughs> Well, what we're looking at right now is an ancient stone anchor in the water. And this is what they generally look like, about the size of a backpack. And that would be good for about a 30-foot, 20-foot fishing boat, right? Wow. Okay. A big, big boat, maybe a couple of them. Now, what I'm about to show you in Florida what? are the largest stone anchors in the world. Oh my on, God. Average, on average, between 5,000 and 12,000 pounds. Look at the hole in it. Like the rope must have been huge. Well, you can see the rope mark in the top left right there, where it's worn down the rock where the rope has been tied for dozens, if not hundreds of years. Oh my God. And these are scattered all across Pinellas and Pasco County of Florida. Well, I was just telling you, Florida is the Holy Land. Pinellas right. County is the land of Pinael. This is, <laughs> this is Tampa Bay. Any right? pine trees or anything by any chance? Well, I'm, of course, you have pineapples, you have pine trees. Of pineapple. course, they'll they'll tell you that's where it's from. <laughs> but Pinellas County, being the Garden of Eden, in multiple people's stories, this is John Saxer. His research led him to Tarpon Springs. Uh, he was an Egyptologist before this. Now you oh, thought man. that you thought that one was big. <laughs> this is an ancient stone anchor of Atlantis. I want to hang out with this guy. He seems fun. <laughs> if if you want to hang out with him, go check out my documentary called The Saxer Stones or The Saxer Saga. The Saxer Stones, Saxer Saga. All right, we'll watch that. If you send me a link, I'll put that in the description for everybody, by the way. So this is the tallest one that we saw. That, that Dude, he it looks like, he what am I even, because it is it at some point it stops looking like rock to me. You know what I mean? Like it almost looks like a giant heart stone Ooh. or one of those stellium yes. seven things. Well, it's got uh, 8,000 plus years of patina on it as well. Okay. You can see the light parts are where it either scraped against pavement or in the middle of the hole, the donut. They actually power wash, pressure wash these <laughs> to get the patina off so that people don't know. Cause they, so everybody, they wanna... everybody, everybody calm down. This is just, it was 8,000 years ago when the giants were making the boats. You know, Big deal. <laughs> they were you always got to wash the holes. The so. giants were bleaching their assholes. <laughs> 10,000 years ago, guys. Nothing changes. So, for those who might say that, that for those who say these holes could be natural, some of them, some of them could be. That these, hole? 
these crude holes. Well, limestone does make like Swiss cheese holes sometimes, but, but perfect like a drill. Exactly. I'm yeah. just playing devil's advocate here. That's I totally agree. Cool. These are I ancient stone that. anchors. I respect that. This hole right here completely debunks the natural hole theory. That is a perfectly bored hole going through Laser a rock yeah, that girl. was underneath water for at least 5,000 years. And the inside of that bored hole has the same patina as the outside of that rock, indicating so that hole is thousands of years old. Equally now, right, old. Yeah. right here, we call this one the sand dollar. I nicknamed mm -hmm. this one the sand dollar. This one has been completely pressure washed. So this one's completely bleached. You can see they kind of gave up to halfway. Um, but you can see the rope marks where this yeah. would have been tied on um, crossing this rock. Now, the stone anchors we were looking at before, you'll see they have two holes in them a lot of times, right? Two well, they're holes. having fun with those. And this is how this is how you can confirm it's an ancient stone anchor. How you would use this anchor, you'd throw it over the side, and very often they'd get stuck because you're throwing it into essentially mud, right? Muck at the bottom of the ocean. Well, in order to get these anchors out, they had two holes on either side of the anchor, and two ropes would be coming from this anchor. And two men, one man would, would get on either side of the boat uh, and they would pull rock. Can you show me that? Can you put your hands up to the, to the camera when you do that, Narco? Please? They, would, they would rock the boat side yeah. to side. Yeah. They would, ro they would uh, rock the rock. Because no one had invented out. the double dildo middle out <laughs> compression yet where you can do yes. both in one hand. Exactly. Giants, giants. That's I forget forgetting they were giants. We're going. So these are some typical anchors. And you can see the two holes is a dead giveaway. Two parallel holes in the same rock. That's an ancient stone anchor. Oh my and god. That's the largest one on the planet, as far as I've seen. They have a couple in India that are about a quarter of this size that are still big, but they do not acknowledge these ones whatsoever in florida they do not acknowledge them there's no scientific study there was one um official that came down there in the 90s and 2000s he got a lot of attention john saxer um attracting people to come look at these rocks but um wow in like the mid 2000s Randall he, carlson what are you gonna do sorry keep going yeah <laughs> The, yeah, those guys are, they've got their head in the sand. They they're, don't know. This is, they're like 10, 20 years behind the, this is brutal, are, man. Yeah. And you're like, I'm just like out with my buddy taking photos of giants anchors, literally mm -hmm. like dozens of them. Uh, that's a pretty brutal. I mean, they were close there. by Florida. They went to the Bimini road, but they weren't. Yes. They could have, they could have been contenders. It's true. Now you, we were just looking at giant stone anchors, right? Now, if you're intelligent, you're thinking, giant anchor giant boat okay where are the giant boats well right next to that anchor you saw on mount ararat there is the outline of a petrified ship mm -hmm. and many people not just tartarian right in the 80s there were documentaries on that yeah many people content uh concede this is a not concede that's not the right word contend What's the word? Contend? Not contend. Which, Whatever. Should, what are they trying to do? Get... They're agreeing. They're agreeing. Concede's that... fine. I'll say concede. concede. Okay. Yeah. They're agreeing that this location is absolutely where Noah's Ark landed. Some right. Ark. Some Ark, because you have the anchor in, uh, you know, only a, a couple thousand feet away, you have the boat, the giant boat. Right. Mm -hmm. And... There's been There's, there was an excavation in the 80s where they went into the fossilized arc as well, which was interesting. And it so and then some people were the reason it got shut down was like, well, this would basically mean that they were giants, and that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. That would be that would be a whole other verse in the Bible being true at the same time. We can't <laughs> like yes. So now I'm about to sh show you about the boats. We just covered the anchors. The anchors show that Atlantis was there. Um but we still need the boats. Well, E.E. E. Calloway was a Christian theologian, theologian um, and lawyer, not from Florida, but moved to Florida. 
he was contacted. Are you familiar with the man named Dr. Brown Landone, mystic author? Wrote like over a hundred mystic, uh, mystical works. You know, he was an occult uh, author. Well, I am Dr. not. Dr. Brown Landone lived in Florida. He cured himself of essentially what was, uh, I don't know what he calls it, but like essentially being quadriplegic. He was bedridden, hmm. cured himself. You know, you get the idea. Classic charlatan um, uh, backstory. Just kidding. Got he's over a, his smallpox. Yeah. Very cool guy. And he Report. met, he instructed this man, E.E. E. Calloway, he initiated him in, into what was called the Order of Melchizedek. And the Order of Melchizedek used a codex called, that used the numbers 1, 4, and 7. And using these numbers, you could test the, the um, validity of any theory or any sentence. You could test the validity of any sentence by reducing it to a certain numerical value. So this is kind of like entering Kabbalistic uh, territory. Yeah, John, John D. and Bacon again. Yeah, exactly. And it's coming back to Atlantis too. Um, so in the beginning, that's E.E. E. Calloway. And he is the man who, who located um, the wood that was used for Noah's Ark, which can only come from one place in the world. That is Northwest Florida near Tallahassee called Bristol, Florida. And in that area, which is the, the uh, Appalachicola, Appalachicola River Valley, that is the apple of Eden. The Appalachians are the apple of Eden. Okay, and this is where paradise was. And in the Garden of Eden, the west coast of Florida, you have gopher wood, the only place in the world where gopher wood can be grown. Well, in the Bible, it explicitly says the ark was made of gopher wood. And in Hebrew, it's kopher, kopher wood. Well, that's the same wood the as far G, as I'm concerned. We, yeah, the Freemasons talk about the secret G for a reason. Yeah, It's one of the lightest woods in the world. Okay. And or most buoyant, however you want to say that. So it floats. It floats better than any wood. It beats both, right? And it, it, it does. And E. e. Calloway was enamored with the, the properties of this wood. Of the 28 trees listed in the Garden of Eden, 27 of them are found to be native in the Apalachicola River area of northwest Florida. Wow. And the four-headed river system of Eden, there's only one four-headed river system in the world that has four equal river heads. And I will show them to you. They are in the Seminole Lake, Florida, which is on the exact, exact line, Florida, Georgia line. Shout out, guys. Uh, yeehaw. Florida, Georgia line, exact Lake Seminole. You have the world's only four-headed river system. And E. Calloway, I'm pulling it up. That's why I'm talking in circles. Um and I got something to tie it all in here towards. Also, order Melchizedek, right? Because the Aaronic priesthood and then Melchizedek's the only ones allowed to collect taxes, right? So it's to be a part of the order of Melchizedek, you can actually force people to pay taxes and, you know, you're above them and their sovereignty. And, okay. So this is E. e. Calloway. Oh, going straight up, waking up with analog style here. <laughs> Oh yeah, he has, a, he has an aesthetic. You know what I mean? That's analog. Anytime you see red text, yeah, red, it's like a shepherd fairy. I can tell immediately. It's a Van Gogh. These are analogs. I wasn't trying to show you guys those, but we can look at them. Ancient yeah, Tallahassee, up. Tallahassee, like Rome, sits upon several, if not seven, hills. No. Seven hills. Do you know the yeah. occult significance of seven hills? I mean, there's seven days a week in the seven. Yeah, yeah. well, keep going, but is that the alchemical and the gods underneath you, right? Because the seven hills, or what do you want to go with? Well, it's all of them. It's the Pleiades that we were just looking at, today, right? Seven hills. Yeah. But her capital, surrounded by majestic oaks. Remember, the Druids had oaks, and Florida has older oaks than anywhere in Europe. Take that to the fucking bank. Her <laughs> capital, surrounded by majestic oaks, which give way here and there to groups of shrubbery and flowering portieries, portieries, I don't know how to say that, 
boasts a Parthianic, hmm, Parthianic portico. It is the center of an aggregation of villas, lovely homes enshrined in blooming grounds, blah, 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 blah. It was here that Achille Muret found a home in his exile when the blazing meteor of the Napoleonic dynasty had run its course. Remember, the Louisiana Purchase coincided with um, Napoleon's, was it his defeat? Am I getting that mixed up? His defeat, but also with the 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 winning of his brother in Spain, a lot of things right. happened. Okay, 1812 is the uh, Napoleonic uh, Napoleon exactly. invasion of Moscow, which didn't go too well. But it did. But what we're seeing right here is that the Napoleon Napoleonic dynasty had run its course. So why is he saying that in like an American context? Right mm -hmm. here, his bones rest, and the pilgrim to his tomb meditates on the mutability of individual and dynastic glory. Alexander, Caesar, Napoleon, how few there are of us. Do their shades ever meet and ruminate? So how he did we go? Name is, he says his name is Achille Murat. Murat yeah. is a Turkish word, right? It's Arabic, Turkish. It, Murat yeah. means like desire or something, like kampf. Yeah, so he was exiled to Tallahassee. Interesting. After, uh, exiled after by assuming, well, you, oh, there's so many rabbit holes i don't know which one to choose but um let's just look at this <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. we'll do it the, again the original garden of eden the python so the four rivers of eden which you know people are people are going to jump to say they're allegorical and no doubt there's an allegorical interpretation to these the four elements you know the four cardinal directions you know so on the python river is the chattahoochee the heidekel is the Fish Pond Creek River, the Euphrates is the Spring Creek River, and the Guinan, the Flint River. The Murat so, River is on the Euphrates. There's actually a, a Murat River there. Oh, wow. And Georgia, you know, we're just talking about Turkey. Well, Georgia is right next to Russia, too. And there's a Georgia right next to Florida. And one of Florida's biggest cities is St. Petersburg. St. Mm -hmm. Petersburg, Russia is essentially Tampa Bay. It's same bay, different cities, Tampa, working, yeah. St. Petersburg. And that Tampa Bay Hotel is actually Turkish Moorish uh, Turkish Moorish architecture. Uh, the architecture in Tampa. Right. We but saw some the, of those Alibaba towers, right? Those were them. Those were the Turkish towers of Tampa Bay. <laughs> and I'm going to show you another little map that my uh, assistant, soon to be producer, if he gets promoted, um he'll know what i mean by that um <laughs> basically my assistant sent me this map and this map is allegedly a satirical what if scenario on whether if america never entered world war one and the allies lost world war one right. the central powers were victorious how they would divvy up america okay right and the grasshopper printed, go ahead it this, was, dick. <laughs> this was printed by um life magazine okay and i gotta pull it up uh, i don't know where, it, where while you're pulling it. it up so there's that book the the man in high castle and in man in high castle philip k dick they're talking about a book called the grasshopper lies heavy which is talking about another scenario where uh things didn't happen the way they did in that world they happened this way right but uh, mm -hmm. in that, they talk, they have Haponifornia, and so the Japanese took over California, and then the Prussians got, you know, most of yes. the hemisphere. Okay, so that's, in, you yeah. that's probably what, what they were um, drawing from when they- Or vice it. versa. I think it might have been Philip K. Dick was, uh, you know, because I think his money came afterwards. You're, you're, see, I don't know enough to, 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 um, to make a call on that. I actually just found out about this map today, too. It blew and knocked my socks off. I think you're talking about this map, right? The Barbarians of Canada. New okay, yeah, you got it. Here. You got New it right Prussia there. Here. American exactly. Reservation. <laughs> Haponica. New Kobe. I want to live in New Kobe, kind of, but I'm, I love San Francisco because that's where I belong. San well, think, think about how interesting this is. They distinctly gave florida what's florida called what's florida called? turkey it's the new ottoman empire oh, Turcon oh that's Turconian. right oh the marat river in baghdad corners of traconia weird so, constantinople so junctions where clearwater is weird sorry 
Isn't that strange? And you know, Junction is the most important place to the biggest occults of Florida. Yes, exactly. And that's Tampa Bay, Constantinople. I mean, the Jesuits sure love Constantinople. I don't yeah, know. Scientology this, there right now. Well, Tampa looks like Constantinople. It, it looks like it. Mm. Let's look at a picture of Tampa Bay Hotel. I mean, it's Turkish architecture. It even tells you right there. Mm-hmm. The, um, can you Could you search Tampa Bay Hotel? Please? Doing it. There we go. Yeah, it'll loading oh it's so beautiful it almost makes up for being stolen if you just search 1900 like tampa bay hotel 1900 it'll you'll see some really good ones there you go Uh, it's some of them some of them it's even like completely overgrown with like vines and they're like oh yeah this is five years old yeah relax (laughs) five-year-old building henry plant and people were uh screaming at us yesterday the plant plantagenet uh, Henry Plant, we didn't make that connection in yeah. the whole video, but of uh, course you could. Henry Plantagenet, Plantagenet, however you want to say it. Um, yeah, it's, and they have the little steam tower. Right, that's an Edison steam Edison steam uh, dynamo. There's the tower. Released. You see the tower on the right-hand side there in the article, the one I was telling you about yes. last night? Yes, the right. smokestack. It's a then, steam steam powered electronic. The Tampa Bay above, Hotel. That hotel was the first hotel in America where every right. single room had electricity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And telephone and line. Edison and Edison designed the electric electric system. Okay. Not only that, this was this hotel was the headquarters and part port of embarkation for the Spanish American War, where they were taking over who? Cuba, the Cubans, the runaway Seminoles again, right? Oh, my God. Yeah. It's amazing when you look at these pictures of – they want me to buy it. I mean, just the idea – okay, also, New Hamburg, right? So we were talking before, David Ewan Jr., about the idea of the Alan, Alemania, like the, the idea of the, these mm-hmm. uh, Turkish and Vienna and the Viennese yep. war, that there's a lot of Turks in, new, in old Prussia as well and our confusion about what turks are because you've got you know janissaries all over europe from when the turks were in charge and think about this the keys the keys of florida this guy whoever made this map is a genius because they're even if they're just going off of pure imagination they're picking up on such good phonetics you have no idea Uh, what are the keys of florida well maybe they are turkeys turkeys look at that right there key west key west is west turkey West I mean, Turkey. And hate. <laughs> They're saying the Gulf of Hate, like, oh, this is our enemy taking us over. Well, hate is Hades. Hate yeah. Haiti is Hades. Haiti is the underworld underneath of paradise. If Florida is paradise, then Haiti is the underworld beneath it. Hades. Check out the book I'm reading right now, Narco. Now that you bring that up. It's called Maps of the Imagination, the Writer is Cartographer. So nice. it it talks about how it you know when they when they're when they're creating maps they're creating other worlds and you're saying that he was very creative with what he named everything and i think it's part of a bigger scheme and i tie it all in together because we were talking about john d earlier we were talking about francis bacon you have john d with the enochian keys john d's connection with crystal ball columbus you have juan ponce de leon looking for the for the fountain of youth and you have all the henrys there's over 13 henrys i've counted so far mm-hmm. and henry means that who uh, one who rules in a line well a king rules right and they they're also robber bands so they were building railways well what if in atlantean times the king so a henry he was an alchemical catalyst of the people he was the life force of the people what if this was how francis bacon was writing because we were talking about the 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 origination of the of the English language and all that stuff. What if this Florida is the new Atlantis, not only the original one, but they were trying to revive it through an alchemical means, putting all these Henry's in it to try and, and and bring it back to life to its original form and taking over all these structures and all these things that, that, that were already here and wiping out the people in the process to again, eliminate his story and make it and shape it into their own. And, and alchemy also affects time. That's what all people have to understand. Not only is it a, a transmutation of base metals into gold, but it's also a transformation of the alchemist, and it's also a transformation of time itself. And we're talking about, t- you know, the golden age, the gilded age, whatever it was that that you know they they were doing all this shit. So mm-hmm. I think it's all connected. It is now, all connected. 
we're deep. We're two hours deep. There's 666 people watching, which is uh, I'll just Illuminati confirmed. What the fuck y'all got? Uh, <laughs> thank you. You said it. And uh, I kind of want to ask a last question, kind of close up some things. We got to definitely do this again, Doctor Longo. Doctor Longo, hair Doctor Longo. This is For great. Sure. Hair um, doctor. My my question being, so it looks to me like there's a scenario where either people who were in their former lands ended up in Florida because it was the ancient place where things happened and they're trying to hold on to the past or it's been this thing that was going on. There's always trade, triangular trade to Florida is forever. And then all of a sudden some other people stole it and they, and it's, is that what's going on? What's going on with the reset? Like, did they lose it? Is it secretly in the hands of a few that are holding on for the what's happening? Or is it a psyop? Or is it? Thank you. You're mute. See, it's a psyop. They muted him. Dude, they don't want him to speak. Yeah, this is the best part. That was on purpose, right? Genius. <laughs> yeah. So, you've got a couple resets, right? You've got the the daddy, the big daddy of resets, which would oh. be the uh, most recent ice age. Saturn um, reset. Yeah. Okay. Fifteen to ten thousand years ago would be that you know kind of generally you know, unanimously uh, accepted the randall carlsoni Car carlsonian reset okay <laughs> ice age well that is where you have your atlantis uh kind of popping up the modern incarnation the box saga incarnation where it's people they're re-implementing an old uh system and this old system is many 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 ages old so many so old that you'd probably start looking forward in time for its origin rather than Mayan back tunes. Okay. All right. All okay. Right. Well, okay. So that system had always been in place. The Atlantis system was a reaction to the ice, the alt land ice, all the land is ice. Right. And the paradise was para da para da is before the ice. Right, so this I'm drawing from the box right. Right, and right here. And, and Bach, because paradise does mean garden, and paradiser means mm -hmm. gardener. Also, Bach, garden. Yeah, and Persian paradiser mm -hmm. means emperor, and paradise means empire. But there again, it's because the emperor is gardening mm -hmm. his garden of people. Yes, good old Bach. So, um, you know that reset. The oldest burial in Florida, like I said earlier, is European has European DNA and strawberry blonde hair, and they're right. bog bodies, like Bach bog body. We've we've made that connection on other bog shows. mills, right? Yeah. But basically, so you have that. If you want to check check mark each of these periods, check. You have old Atlanteans, transatlantic people from way before Colombian times, way before even the natives that the natives knew of when Columbus got here. So these guys were long gone when that even came around. Well, then you have about the 500 years ago reset, which is the age of Cologne, the age of discovery, right? And there was a lot of resetting being done there. The Spanish are, there's probably no more clear <laughs> uh, villain, villain in like the historical narrative than the Spanish. Uh, it's Aragonian. Period. Okay, there's like six. There's six different okay, states. Sorry, sorry. As a Spaniard, Spanish. Uh, <laughs> That's not my fault. The period of Sp Spanish naval dominance. Um, and the burning uh, of all the books during the Inquisition, so that they could act yeah. like that makes sense. That we're reading backwards Arabic. You're right. Great. So yeah. it it was ugly, right? But. The, you have that timeline with the Spanish and the French doing doing their early um, discovery. Then you have the 1812, 1850s Civil War period reset, where you have the Muslim Confederacy. That's exactly what it was. The Southern United States were confederated under the Muslim flag, and I I just showed you guys that with, right. um, pretty clearly. If and they were fighting not people who are anti-slave but people that were anti i don't know moorish essentially and that's why you have seminoles taking in runaway slaves <clears throat> meanwhile they actually own slaves so how is it that they're taking runaway slaves and are slave owners the largest one of the largest if not the largest plantation in florida history was right. ran by a black African queen from Africa 
who married a white man. She, they'll they'll say that she was purchased. Nonetheless, when the guy was out of the picture, that African queen ran that plantation until right. she died. And dowries are pretty common parts of marriage. And not all the slaves that she owned were black. There were indentured servants and there were Slavs and Irish, etc. Right. So that was Kingsley Plantation, by the way. If you guys want to look up Kingsley Plantation, um, we're probably running out of time here in a little bit. But um, yeah, we can do that, though. It's worth it. Kingsley Plantation. I remember I think I went to Kingsley Plantation. There was like a celebration uh, or some sort of a festival when I was there in like 2003. So if, if you go back to this Google search bar, well, the slave house, the master's house is actually a star fort, a four sided bastion house with a bastion in each corner. But it's made of wood, so I'm not going to call it a star fort, but it's that shape. But what's Today. interesting is the slave quarters, Kingsley Plantation slave quarters. Or that, see the ring? The, the yeah. star fort, yeah, okay. The semi ring, see the ring? Yeah. Those are the slave quarters. It's a perfect ring or half semicircle that used to be a full ring. And those buildings are solid kakina. What? So that, that rock is essentially what the pyramids are made out of, clumped Dude, up shell. That's and pretty those, amazing. So those slave quarters are more durable than the master's quarters and would certainly survive a storm while the master's quarters, maybe not so much. Wow. And this was made in a semicircle Blah, 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 blah. The, we'll dive deeper into that maybe another time. But a Kingsley plantation, you know, maybe, yeah, for, a, crazy. maybe for a king. Oh, my God, Dr. Longo. Juan, we're going to have to do this again. Let me pull up where they can find some of your stuff. In the meantime, also, guys, I know some of you are watching this on Old World Florida. This is brilliant that we're doing a swap cast. Juan, next time, let's make sure we're streaming on yours as well. We'll get that set up. Uh, make sure you liked and subscribed and you click on the all button of the bell. Make sure that black bell turns into a white bell. I don't know. It's a kind of fool thing, but if you get the all notifications, you'll watch all these videos and make sure you know to go to the lives because videos and lives are now different. But is there any other place you want me to make sure I go to, to show them your content? No, that's it. That's it. Really? They know where well, to I'm me. doing it anyway. Go to the <laughs> Patreon, give him money. All right. Yeah. Become Red a, bubble, become a sugar daddy. Buy his T-shirts. Be cool about it. Okay. Buy my mediocre Singaporean mass-produced merch that I've never seen in my life. Limited edition, super cool stuff. All right, I'll help you with your merch game. Don't worry. He shows you other holes on his Patreon, too, if you know what I mean. So <laughs> if you become a sugar daddy, not just the, the anchor holes, but other ones, Among too. Homunculus only fans. All right. Okay, but here's also one-on-one -on -one podcast. He's smart. He's funny. He's handsome. They love him. This is also where you can get his lives. Make sure you subscribed and you've clicked on the bell. Make sure you go to videos. I went, is your website not the same now? What do I do? Yeah, it's the same. The one on one podcast.com. You can find me on there. Oh, that's and right. It's the one on one yeah, the, podcast. Because I'm the Juan. That's why. Yeah, it's not one. It's the one. Yeah, make sure you buy his book, Occultist uh, Mundi Journal. Pretty sweet. I don't know if you still have physical copies. Do you still have you sold out yet? Guys, yeah, you better hurry on that. Cards. You better hurry up because these are pretty, they're in hot demand. All right. And then, of course, you go to TartarNova.com and you can buy some of my stuff. I appreciate you all. Go to the Discord. Click on the Discord. Join the thing. If you have any more questions, you want to make sure that Dr. Longo and Juan answer, we're down to do another episode and talk about all these things some more. I'm super glad that you came. This has been great. Thank you for being here. Yeah, awesome. <clears throat> any, uh, any parting uh, words of wisdom for us all or some advice? Yeah, some people in the chat were talking about how much Nar uh, Longo looks into the state of Florida. Well, I, I encourage everybody, wherever they are at, to look into the history around their area, around their states, and you will be surprised as to what you find. I was delightly sur surprised as well when I first started looking into it, and it's thanks to homie Romy from Rising from the Ashes, because he's the one that went to Flagler uh, hotel or college somewhere in st augustine he was blown away and i was ignoring it the whole time and so i start until i started looking into it and then from my research i again doing constant research i came across narco longo then we teamed up uh, we've hung out he's awesome i love him and here we are so yeah i encourage everybody to check out their area you, the, you might be sitting on a gold mine of some sorts we're and gonna get you on with dane to talk about the maristas in puerto rico because i can see a lot all of a sudden with cuba haiti puerto rico these connections all of a sudden to florida mm -hmm. and so yep, i'm the caribbean way 
Yeah, it was a lot going on. Yeah, and Juan uh, Ponce de Leon was a homunculus, so that's all I can say. I wanted to close on that, touch touch on that um, in closing. You know, I, I I can handle that criticism, people saying, um, you know, like it's a very narcissistic approach to Florida. But um, <laughs> you know what I believe? I've said it before, I'll say it again. It's the duty of every people, every place, every group, culture, religion, to make the argument that they are the best, they are the correct, they are the original, they are the only. Else why, else, uh, you know, <clears throat> or else what would be the point of even having an identity in a, a cultural, ethnic, uh, geographical location if you did not believe it to be the proper one, the original, the correct, the best, the sacred. So, you know, there also seems like there's a lot of so a couple of things there, like you just said, uh, you know, you're looking into a place that you live in. I think that's huge because if you're reading a book, you're not necessarily going to see the stuff as clearly as if you're there and you're in person with people going around and looking at the actual rocks. You know, how am I supposed to research uh, stone anchors and find out anything on a Wikipedia page the way you're going to do it mm. in real life? The other thing mm. is, I think you can still think that, for instance, with Tartaria, um we're all kind of part of this idea of the best way that we can be it's a choice it's a community it has a lot more to do with the way you function the words you're using the way you're thinking about the words you're using these are you know there's blood and then there's also culture and culture is this thing like you said phoenician that can be transmitted and become part of the mind and it wet wires the brain and helps us evolve so it's true there's an objective better but it's something that we can all be a part of and i think that's also amazing Somebody said that Florida has the nicest criminals in the chat. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, is that absolutely. a cop? Is that one of the cops that said that? All right, guys, I, I love you very much. I got to do a show with Waking with Ben. Analog's about to do a show with me right after this. Yeah, I don't know how we're going to make this oh, work. But it's going to be amazing. I'm going to take this up. You're welcome to join. Crypto Alchemist is going to be there. I'm just saying. But I love you guys. We'll do it soon. <laughs> Bye. Look at my L.A. smile. Man. Uh... different now. A man holds in his mortal hand the power to abolish all forms of human poverty and all forms of human life. It begins a very special time of the year for us. It's the time of peace and reflection. One thing we should all be thankful for is that we live in America, where we have the freedom to change things and the opportunity to grow. Man, uh... I, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, do solemnly swear that you will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. And will, to the best of your ability, and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you, God. So help me, God. 